if you see somebody in the wild with a for those who love I'll sacrifice tattoo, that is not an indecision tattoo anymore. <laughs> Because like people be like, hey man, I I make like I can't tell you how like my friends will be at like a you know out at the beach or like at a place where, where like you can see the beginnings of it. And the guy be like, yo, let me take that picture, of that tattoo. And like you like indecision? And I'd be like, what? <laughs> like they have yeah. no idea what's going on. <laughs> What up, Canada? This is Trent from Infiltrate. This is Matt from Warper. This is Jordan from Now or Never. We're coming live from Daytona Beach, and you're watching the Scope Disposer podcast. Well, other than that, I think we're ready to get going. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Scoped Exposure Podcast. I am very pleased to welcome uh, one of the three of the Axe to Grind hosts, um, Tom from uh, Indecision Colossus and, like I said, Axe to Grind uh, Podcast. And I'm very excited to have you on, man. Thanks so much, man. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, it's 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 a little surreal, honestly, hearing your you know professional podcasting voice all through through this means uh, versus <laughs> I'm just listening to, to something through Spotify. But I wish we were professional. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. just it's, <laughs> it's just me trying to keep my Brooklyn accent at bay. That's all I right. Can do. Yeah, that's really all I can do at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it yeah, it's too funny because normally like. Um, a lot of guests that I have on the show, either it's their first time on a podcast or, you know, they're just in bands. Sure. Um, but to hear, you know, like, I, like, I feel like I'm always listening to you guys so often. Um, I was even tripping out when all the new drug church songs, or I guess there was like two new songs that came up. Right, and right. I think it's in Bliss Out. Patrick has like a little speaking section. And I'm right, like, he's like, see you at the vigil. And I'm yes. Like, <laughs> it just sounds like little snippets from the podcast in the music. But uh, yeah, it's too funny. Um, but yeah, Tom, I'm really excited to be chatting about you. Obviously, uh, you've been in hardcore for a long, 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 long time. Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, Axe to Grind is, I think, doing a lot of really cool things in our world. Um, so uh, for the few folks at home who might not know who you are, do you want to just give a proper introduction, the band you're part of and what you do in those projects? Sure, sure. Um, my name is Tom. I sing in uh, Indecision, Most Precious Blood sometimes. <laughs> um, and I'm in a newer band with uh, two dudes from Mind Force and um, a fellow from Age of Apocalypse called um, Colossus that we just put out a seven inch on Triple B. Um, so that's uh, Jay, the singer from Mind Force, is a drummer who's a, like an incredible drummer. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Shaw, the guitar player, who plays guitar, and Jack from Age of Apocalypse, who I think will be huge in the next year or two yes um, yeah like gigantic so like we're gonna be like remember when he did that cute little band colossus like we're gonna be like <laughs> left in the dust i know but um yeah so yeah that's um yeah and i'm one of the three um hosts or jerks depending on how much you like um <laughs> i'm one of those guys <laughs> yeah no i I'm I'm a big fan of of all those things. Um, the Thank Colossus uh, EP is honestly, you know, it's a wild ride for like a six minute little release. So I'm oh, I definitely that. definitely want to chat about that. Sure. Um, but Tom, the 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 first thing that we do before we even talk about music is check some bevs on the podcast. Absolutely. Um, so tell me what you're bringing to the show, and uh, we'll start to get into it. Sure. I'm bringing Pepsi Mango. Okay. Which is a newer flavor. Um, it's actually, I bought this a while back thinking like, this is going to be terrible, but I have to experience it for sure. And then yeah. I had it. I was like, this is actually, this is actually not half bad. So I, every once in a while, I'll treat myself to one. I see. Um, it's pretty good. Like my part of New York and Queens where, where I don't get a lot of like the cool flavors. I just get like the general, you know, mm -hmm. every once in a while you'll find a wild cherry, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, cause a I know wild like, I was cherry to... in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> I know Coke did like a coffee flavor mm -hmm. and like trying to find that is it's like, it's like a chunk King. Like you can never, like, it's very rare to find one. So mm -hmm. this is, I figured I'd go, you know, planning for this, I go a little bit off center and I went for the mango. Yeah, no. Well, I, I'm a big mango fan myself. Um, orange is my favorite color, but you know, mango, mango is one of those things where it's a, it's a hard fruit to prep. 
um because like the right. seed is fucking gigantic gigantic right, you can't right, just right. like bite into it like an apple yeah. but once you have it it's like it's it's, it's delicious, delicious. absolutely um yeah so mango flavored anything is usually a go-to so right that's a great bev to check um i'm not sure uh how familiar you are with our show but um something that was huge for me when we got into season two was getting some bev sponsors um so anyone that's watching the the video version might have seen i uh i've been drinking some liquid death we're not sponsored by them it's kind of like officially unofficially sponsored um just because we had uh their vp of marketing on and he's like anytime you need boxes just let me know and i'll send some um that's awesome i'm honestly like kind of curious are are, you know like we're we're jumping around a little bit but um the episodes that you guys are doing now is it still all through zoom or eventually are you guys gonna be able to be back in the same room for episodes? we actually don't even use zoom we use um a, uh, an app called zencaster oh okay so sure. we don't even see each other this okay. is just three people like chatting almost on the phone right um so we and hopefully we don't like jump all over each other right that's right. kind of like the one thing that's kind of hard because you can't tell if someone's about to talk yeah so we, yeah well i was um, only i was only thinking that because i'll definitely um if you guys are interested i'll i'll hook you up with uh Stix's email and i i think you know getting some cans in in your guys's hands uh if you oh, guys are into that. sparkling water and all that would be I am, yeah. great i remember seeing that and being like that must be like alcohol as ridiculous right, as right. It. and i'm like i'm straight edge i'm like i'm never and then every like straight edge, i'm like did everyone sell out what the hell's happening and then i was like oh it's like water in a can i'm like what a what a, what a weird concept yeah everyone's like okay well i i'll break edge some for something this cool <laughs> looking with that it's a cool cop you know like the 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 layout is beautiful and stuff mm-hmm. but i saw you guys got a sponsor chai yeah, yeah. So you you called it um, before I even brought it on the screen. So yeah, so we got um, Say When, which is a uh, it's a chai company out of Vancouver, Canada. It's so Fantastic. fucking bright here at sometimes. Say when. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, but this is my go to. It's like the dirty chai, so it's like the closest to the coffee. Um, right, right. So I always like when I do these is like literally make it on the episode because it's so easy. I think that's the bottom of it. There we go. Cool. It's like AM, ASMR, right? Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> There's always, um, you know, sometimes when I'm checking like new bevs on the show, um, so, sometimes there's like dead air because the guest is just like wanting to see my reaction and I'm trying to fi- <laughs> fill the dead air. So I'm like trying to drink it fast. So no. <laughs> they're like, vamp, buddy, you got to talk while I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that a horchata? What am I looking at? No. No. So, oh, so the that, but... the beauty of say when is like it's just like a one to one mix. So I oh, okay. always just you know it's it's like twenty two degrees Celsius out here in Calgary today. So it's like super super nice. So all all it is is like a one to one, and then it's just like I use the little measurements on the mason jar, sure. and then we're good to go. I should have grabbed a good. spoon so I could stir this a little bit better, <laughs> but um. I'll just do some some shaking of it off camera. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, Tom, cheers to you. Um, really stoked uh, to be doing this. Um, so um, any new guests that I have on the show, uh, I always like to get a little bit of context on how they got into hardcore. And sure. definitely, you know, with your tenure of how long you've been in the space for, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's always funny hearing some people more my age where, where they got into it off of like, um, I guess like certain record labels or like um, certain like music videos. So, you right. know, let's go back in time and give me kind of the origin story for you. The first time you heard punk or, you know, something sure, sure. like that. And we'll start to break it down. Okay. So um, back when the, there were still dinosaurs. No, um, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Way back when, before, yeah. um, before the internet. Um, no, you know what? I, a friend of mine, I think it was like freshman year of high school, a guy named um, James Kim, who I actually, um, he messaged me. I hadn't spoken to the guy in probably 25 years, like no, through no, you know, no problem. It's just like people grow and, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, he had messaged me because we still had some like mutual friends. And I was like, dude, you don't have know how much of an impact you've had on my life completely unwittingly. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, you gave me a dinosaur junior minor threat tape in freshman year of high school. And I was like, that literally changed my life. Mm-hmm. And he's like, really? <laughs> I go, yeah. And he's like, how? And I'm like, because after that, then I bought like a sick foot all record. And then I got this and I got that. And I was like, that changed my life. I was like, I got to be in bands. I got to go places. I'm like, this is bonkers. Mm-hmm. 
And he's like, oh, he, like, and he had like no real idea. For sure. You know, and I was like, you know, and because he was like, you know, he just went on, had family. He was, I think he joined like the armed forces, whatever the story was. Yeah. But I was like, you have no idea. So it was ultimately freshman year. Um, I got a like a 90 minute cassette. Like one side was the Minor Threat discography. The other side was Dinosaur Jr., which two bands that I still love to this day. So it was very appropriate. Hmm. You know, and I like metal and like, you know, the more popular crap. You know what I mean? I liked, you know, Metallica and all that sort of stuff because I feel like any angsty, you know, eighth grader likes that sort of nonsense. And, um, but yeah, after getting that tape and then, then it was like off to the races and then started going to shows and just buying records and mm-hmm. well, mostly tapes. I didn't really buy vinyl. I regret that now. Oh, yeah. But yeah. as a kid, it was kind of like, well, I have this. So I could either spend this, you know, get one record for 18 or I could buy two tapes for 18. So I bought a lot of cassettes. <laughs> it's like Good all the friend. classic hardcore records I have on cassette if they were available because it was just a, a way to get two things instead of one. Right. Yeah. The Yeah. I, I'm curious. I, I'm sure the value of like OG cassettes is far different than like the first pressing of like a, a, a God tier hardcore right. record. I would, yeah. I would have to imagine. I mean, and they, I don't think, I mean, I haven't played them, but I would imagine as soon as you put them in, they'd snap the tape, the tape player because they're so like antiquated and like they've been sitting drying up for the last 25, 30 years, whatever it is. Mm. And they're probably just sitting there. But that was like literally my go. Like I'd, I'd get cassettes just because I could I could afford two instead of just getting one. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then like did a couple of bands and then. Then I woke up and I was on a podcast in 2021. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it all kind of went very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think like it, it's strange at times looking back, even how long I've been doing hardcore sure. and bands, just like it feels like just yesterday, but it's like, oh, like I'm starting to become some of the older um, influence right. in my, you know, seeing this like predominantly pretty younger. So yeah, it, it just kind of flies by as you're it's just amazing. doing shit. You're, yeah. you're, right. You're like, that record had to be, oh my God, that record's 15 years old. We we have those revelations <laughs> on the podcast a lot that I'm like, I, what when did that come out? 2016? They're like, 2008. I'm like, pardon me? Like, I yeah. have no concept of any sort of time. Right. Because it all, you know, it all kind of melds into one. <laughs> right. One kind, kind of, of streamlined yeah. Yeah, uh, stem weird. of consciousness. But yeah. uh, I, I like hearing how... Um, how how you were mentioning like going back to that uh original friend who like gave you that tape and you're like you yeah. literally because it was very similar like i feel like most people either listening or watching to, to to this podcast can attest that there was like a moment where someone's like yo you want to listen to something like stupid and then it's like they put in the cd that just like unlocks it or like pulls the veil over right, right. Over they may have lives. like a cool older sister or an old brother older brother or a friend or a cousin or whatever like and like even you know when i was younger like i'd have like neighbors that was like listening to like kiss mm-hmm. or like even like the ramones like so i was like you know nine years old listening to the remote like having no idea what like iron maiden was. like just listening to it be like this sounds cool i have no idea what's going on right but like that you know james giving me that cassette you know and like i feel like a lot of like you know origin stories for anybody the person who gives you like that first like unlocks it for you is usually there for a little bit like this guy was not involved in any way mm-hmm. after that so it was kind of, it wasn't like we were going to shows together like i have friends that i went to high school with that we still go to shows together Mm -hmm. he just kind of like disappeared so it was kind of like he has no concept right of anything Mm -hmm. of of how anything went not even in terms of like but just kind of like you know a ninth like earth crisis probably doesn't exist to him in his purview (laughs) because in 1991 or whatever they weren't a thing in brooklyn (laughs) so it was kind of like but like he must have you know he missed out on so much stuff yeah. Like it's like kind of frozen in amber, his experience. Mm-hmm. Well, you know? yeah, I, I do think, you know, it was very similar for me. I had like a uh, childhood best friend. He was showing me some of those like, um, you know, I, I had like the classic like Christian upbringing. So it was sure. like, yo, listen to like Demon Hunter and As I Dying and some of these like more metal right. bands and even Under Oath sure. on that degree. And it was like kind of um, it was strange because I started like playing in bands and started to like look into that as much as I could immediately. And it's weird looking back now, like, you know, you, you add the person on Facebook and then you're just like, they're just in your friends list, but you're not like, you know, running in the same circles as them. But I don't, I don't even know if he listens to heavy music a anymore or B could even like attest to like, um, knowing that that was so crucial for me growing up to, to, to have him show me that. And then I just obsessed 
about it and and that's right. my life <laughs> right like you got to do bands you book shows you book fests you do a pocket like mm-hmm. and some guy like is probably out there like at a you know a desk job kind of being, yeah. <laughs> meanwhile it's like hey man take solace in the fact that you changed at least one person's life yeah yeah which and, is pretty cool yeah you know? and, and that that pushes me for sure because like again like like being kind of like one of the the older I guess people now within Western Canada, which is weird to say, because I like I always felt like I was always looking up at like, you know, like when I was going to youth group, it was always like the older kids or the older grades in my school. Right. Um, Or even when I was going to shows, it's like, look at these people, these dudes in these bands when, you know, like half of them were just like 21 or something like that. But now now like doing this podcast and just doing scoped and all the the other projects that i'm involved in i'm like constantly thinking about like how could i potentially inspire just one person that becomes the next hate five six that becomes the next extra grind podcast like you know you never know until it's like you're on the other side of it oh absolutely yeah and i think it's funny like we always talk about it too it's kind of like you look at like these like you know looking up at like the older kids but in the grand scheme of things they're like three years older than you but like (laughs) yeah at the time it seems like I mean, this guy's got to be like 47. You're like, no, he's 22. <laughs> like, it's like, right. you know, but like there's their experience and so much. Like now it makes no difference. The three years is nothing. But then, you know, the guy who's in, in a band for three years, you're like, oh, he's like the elder states person. Right. Like, this is, he's been around for a long time. <laughs> but meanwhile, it's like, hey, he's three, four years older than you, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And you see that now, you know, even in New York, like it's kind of like. Walter Schreifels isn't that much older than the rest of us. You know, <laughs> right. we all I've, I've listened to him, but like. I might have been 16, he might have been 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or right. whatever the difference might have been, you know. Yeah. And and I think like I think that there was almost this mystique uh, when I was like first playing in bands where it's like there's this like secret um time frame of like when your band could become something. And so it's like right. within the 18 to like 24, 25 or whatever. And like being 28 now, it's like this is you know, the band, the band that I'm playing in now is like the first time where it's like more than just my local circle gives a fuck about it. And, right, right, right. you know, and, and there's so many bands that you see now that, you know, are still doing stuff, maybe not on a full time basis, but will play festivals, will play like bigger shows that are into their 40s and 50s and things like right. that. So, yeah, I love that, yeah, like, I mean, non age, um, I guess, like, oh, like, like you you got to be uh under this to uh to do the hardcore hardcore thing yeah and i think it's funny like we um the guys from miracle drug um from louisville they're like in my age range whatever and they're like it's an all ages show that means both ends of the spectrum and i was like (laughs) make us go you make a good point right you know because i think it's hard you know i mean and as an older person like to be in a band like does a 23 year old need to hear me it's tough it's hard to say you know what i mean and i think you know, you can do it and not totally embarrass yourself. Or, I mean, a lot of people in my age range embarrass themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So it's it's a very kind of slippery slope that it's like, you don't want to take up too much space because there's a lot younger folks that, that have much more stuff to say that are much more kind of a value than some older person. Yeah. Yeah. But, But I do like that idea where it's like all ages means, bringing your nine-year-old kid who it might be their very first show and they're sitting on your shoulders with the giant the giant hand cans out. yeah right yeah but also <laughs> to like you know the the 60 year old who's like i i've been here since like day one or whatever right i saw the dead kennedy is tough yeah yeah. You know. yeah yeah and i think that you know i think i was like that's actually a good point i never really thought of it that way but yeah absolutely um so yeah let's talk about some of the bands that uh that you've been a part of sure. so um i i I don't know if Indecision is like the first band that you've been in, but like that's probably one of the most, you know, well-known projects that, uh, you know, when people can tie your names together. So t- tell me about the formation of that and just kind of like, you know, th- I think the last thing that you guys put out was just before I- 1999, I believe. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, without me. So like there were two singers, there was yes. me and another guy. Yeah, yeah. The last record that they did with the other guy was 1999. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the release of Carol was 99. Yeah, because I think I saw it was like 95, 90, no, wait, 96, 97, 98, 99 with, you know, you on the first two and then the new yeah. vocalist on the other. So, yeah, so we had four records out in four years. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is, damn. When like, you think just back, you like, that's out. pretty wild. Yeah. 
Justin was busy. Um, yeah, uh, we started. What, we were in a band in high school called Farmer, which was terrible. Oh, terrible! Uh, like un- like ungodly bad. Um, that like no one has a demo, so I never have to worry about it getting out because it's like that bad. It's like <laughs> like we didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. Nobody knew what they were doing. And then they were going to start a new band, and um, Justin from Indecision was like, "We should get Tom to sing." And another guy in the band was like, "I don't want everyone to like compare us to Farmer." And I was like, no one knows who Farmer is. It doesn't matter. Um, and then they went through a bunch of different singers and they're like, all right, well, uh, Tom in. And then, so we were all high school friends. Mm-hmm. Um, we all went to the same all boys Catholic high school in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had to get our uh, angst out some way. And then, um, yeah, we existed probably for like three years before we really did much of anything. Like it was one of those like, played five shows last year really taking off you know like yeah and then um we our big break and and you can tell me if i'm rambling and it's like too much of a story no no so you should know we, as well as everyone rambling is encouraged on a podcast so. <laughs> <laughs> so our first kind of real like quote unquote big break is uh justin gets home from high school one day and his mother's like you got a call and she's like he's like from who he's like roger moret from agnostic front and Justin's like what <laughs> So he calls him back and he goes, um, hey, man, like um, I'm booking a show. He was managing Madball at the time. OK. And he was like, I'm booking a show at the Wetlands, which is like this big um, venue in, in Manhattan. Um, that was like very, very, very popular in like the jam band scene. That's like where like Dave Matthews and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff came from. Um, he's like, you know, do you guys want to play? And we're like, and Justin's like, sure. And he's like, can you guys draw kids? And Justin's like. Yeah, like we, he was like totally like lying, but then it was like full court press. Like anyone you ever met has to come to the show because we just told the guy from Agnostic Front that we can draw people, right? You know, um, <laughs> and then so we played it, ended up being awesome. And it was like, I forget who it was, Madball 25 to Life, Powerhouse, the Billy Club Sand, which is first show. Wow, um, okay, we were on like second or third. And uh, it was this, it was a show that Agnostic Front came like reunited at, so it was like this huge thing. Oh, okay. It was like sure. a secret reunion for them. Mm. Um, but like after that, it was kind of like we we were able to kind of show that you know like oh people come out for them, and then like a couple of year, months later we got to play with like a veil there, mm. and then we played you know, and then it was sort of like then we were able to, we were able to do like an LP, and then like then we had our own little thing, so people would come out to see us and, like Silent Majority and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, like we, the first like three years, we were just like, we barely did anything. You know, like we, we tried, but no one really cared. Sure. Because at the time, like Brooklyn was like an outer borough. Oh, weird. okay. It mm-hmm. wasn't as cool as like, like the strokes made it or whatever. Like it was kind of like, people like, people thought of Brooklyn, they thought of Biohazard and then everyone just like wrote us off. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, it's kind of strange because mm-hmm. they were, they were an entry point band for a lot of people, us included. To yeah, an extent. definitely. Yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah, and then like we kind of did our own thing. We were able to like play CBs and wetlands on our own, and um, and then like we went on tour, um, and then we got robbed in Vancouver. Oh, the last tour. Like so this is why this is one of the like turning points. Like why I wasn't in the band anymore. Okay, so yeah, as a, I, I, like, as a Canadian, I I apologize. <laughs> for it was that. brutal. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we put out a record in '97, Unorthodox. 1998 we put out a record called most precious blood we're doing a summer tour with silent majority who if, if anyone who's listening hasn't heard them check them out you'd love it it's like a veil seven seconds girl but it's one of the best new york bands ever hmm, okay um, and millhouse um <laughs> we're in vancouver we get sent to the wrong venue um and like we're like we're idiot new york people and we don't realize anything and it was funny a ram from champion is the guy who booked the show oh really okay right so That's this is way cool. back when yeah yeah so the show got moved our booking agent never told us i guess we were in a very um in a in a part of vancouver where heroin use was like very 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 prevalent mm-hmm. oh okay yeah, no idea so we're like you know we we go we find out that we're at the wrong place we're in like a park we're going back and somebody from Salmon majority is like why does that guy look like he's coming out of your van and he was and like our van got like ransacked like ransacked like they stole i had cassettes because it was back then like they stole like my fiona apple tape like oh. that's all i wanted <laughs> some some dude has like a like a mastercard straight edge shirt somewhere out there so we like we go into full like we we chase people we're you know Holy getting fuck. our stuff back all this sort of stuff 
It's one thing to be like, I'm looking for wallets and money versus like, I'm looking for hardcore memorabilia. Like, yeah, like uh, backpacks, you know? Yeah. And we're like, oh, come on, man. And like, so we chased two of the guys into a, into a boat, like a, like a, like a 7 Eleven type place. And like, these two guys like stopped us at the front door and like pulled guns on us. And we're like, all right. So we got some of our stuff back. And the cops were like, um, yeah, you might want to get out of here because now everyone in town is looking for you. And we're like, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. All right. So then we drove with a broken window, like out of British Columbia. We're like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like anywhere in Washington sounds better than this right now. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And uh, we ended up, no, we ended up playing the show. The show was awesome. And it was, it was, um, uh, I forget the band from Kelowna. Kelowna? Um, Col- and yeah, then, Kelowna. You're, you got Kelowna, that. Kelowna, right? right? Yeah. Um, and then Strain headline. So it was like all of our bands oh, and okay. Strain headline in Vancouver. So it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then like we played our way down but like, after that at that point we were all like yeah who the f- wants to do this anymore you know what i mean and, like right and like the last like nice thing that happened was like we went we went to revelation and they're like oh we heard you guys got broken into we're like yeah and then he's like who got their clothes stolen i was like me and they're like go to the warehouse grab whatever you want i was like all oh. right so do I was a like, little uh, I'll take a gorilla biscuit shirt. I'll take a youth today. I was like making out like a bandit. Yeah. Um, I was like, I didn't really like the shirts they stole, so this is way better. Um, I've never thought like, of that experience of going to like a, a place like All in Merch or any like place that just has it and just like shopping around like you're at the mall. It or was something. incredible. It was like overwhelming. <laughs> I was like, and then you don't want to be like the greedy jerk. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I also, they also stole a hoodie. Can I grab a hoodie? Like I don't yeah. want to be that guy. Um, oh, this is on Champion. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Gildan. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. You know any comfort color? Yeah, it was not. Um, <laughs> uh, um, and then yeah, like by the time we got home, it was kind of like uh, it wasn't really going that well. I didn't really want to do it that much anymore. They didn't want to do it with me anymore. Mm. I had gotten into grad school, so they were like they still wanted to kind of like. Yeah, dogs. yeah, they were hungry, and, and kind of like, you were yeah, and doing like, other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Well, this is cool, but like, I, I can do it during the summer." But other mm-hmm. than that, I'm not really. So then they got Artie, who's the guy who actually signed us to the label that put out the two LPs. Oh, okay. Gotcha. He sang for Millhouse, sang for a bunch of other bands. So he joined. They lasted for like about a year and a half, maybe two years. Mm-hmm. Then they broke up for their own reasons. They b- broke up in El Paso, Texas. So I'm yes. tell you how far away from New York it is. <laughs> like they were, you know, and uh, two of them went one way, the other two went the other way, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then, um, and then, yeah. Tell me about like the 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 coming around of that because like that that's always been a thing that I've seen where like hardcore is one of those things where where bands can do like one off shows or little reunion things, and it doesn't need to right. be this like big like highly marketed deal it could just be like this band's playing this fest tomorrow and people are like oh my gosh this is crazy so right like how we came like the indecision thing came back around yeah yeah and then just like yeah the placement of like oh yeah we want tom like it for any shows that we're doing in the future like we'll have like tom's gonna be that versus already or you know do you guys like kind of swap off or whatever i I mean already doesn't isn't very interested in it which is fine. Yeah, and that's cool. Um, I think it, it was, it's, you know, it depends and it depends on your preference and stuff. And like, there's no right answer or wrong answer, like what records you like or whatever. It just seemed at the time. So we got back together because long story short, um, there was a benefit for a friend on the Island. Um, that's how majority reunited for, he needed help on um, paying for cancer treatment. Okay. For whatever reason, we couldn't do it at the time. Um, and it kind of weighed on me. I was like, that really sucks, man. We could have fucking, we should have done that. You know, mm. but like someone was like out of town, whatever the story was. So then we had gotten an offer to play um, the super, uh, Black and Blue Bowl. Okay. And uh, we're like, oh, all right. And then like half the guys didn't want to do it. But I'm like, we really owe it to this dude, James, like to play and raise some money or whatever. And uh, like, it, but like you said, it was one of those things. It wasn't like, here's the press release. Here's this. It was just kind of like, we were a band on a show. Right. You know, and it was kind of like we were probably like middle of the bill, it's like VOD headlined, no underdog headlined, like VOD killing time. It was like a cool show, but it was like we were just like on the show, you know, not mm-hmm. and we didn't know really what to expect. It had been years, you know. Yeah. It ended up being awesome. And then like soon like and then we did um unfortunately, um the uh, the guy James who we played for was he was was doing well at the time. <clears throat> he actually played a song with us at the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. He was like a great bass player. So he played a, a song with us at the show. 
um, he had he passed away in the interim. And so uh, we were doing like another memorial show for him. And uh, his parents like wanted all the money donated to, I don't know if it's it's known in Canada, like Ronald McDonald House, which sounds like a terrible thing, yeah. but it's like no, they put that. up, you know, yeah. families and stuff when they're dealing with kids that are not doing well in hospitals and stuff like that. So they wanted all the money donated there. Mm. And then like, so the first show was me, uh, Rachel, um, Justin, myself, Paul Klein, who played drums for Suburban Scum. And this um, this good Mike McGarvey who plays bass for like Candiria. He was in like Marauder and Madball. Oh, okay. So he, they played. So we grew up with Mike, so we played with them. And then like the next show, the drummer's like, "All right, I'll do it." I'm like, "Okay." So our drummer came back, the original mm. drummer. So it was like the same guy, you know, most four fifths of the band and Mike, and then uh, we got Steve, the original bass player, back for like the next show. And then it was kind gotcha. of like, um. You know, we didn't want to play it into the ground, but like we'll do a show, you know, every once in a while. Like we usually before our plan was like kind of like do like a home and an away show. Oh, OK. So it would kind of be like, mm. you know, we'll play, you know, like a like a local show. To me, I, I think we're all still involved in hardcore and stuff because we love it. There's no like we're not looking to be rich. You know, <laughs> right, we're not right. looking to yeah. pay rent off a of hardcore, to be quite honest with you. So it's kind of like we want experiences and like be able to say like. We play with Unbroken. We got to play with whoever, like all of our heroes. Right. So, like that's kind of what we're looking for. Like I don't really, you know, like what to say. Like I remember, I used to go to concerts here, and now we got to play there. Like that sort of stuff. Right, that's right. what we're looking for. I'm not looking for like whoever gives me the most money is where we'll show up. It's like I, you know, if you like, we got to play like FYA one year. Mm -hmm. it was like this is awesome. Yeah. Like I wasn't expecting to be, you know, as long as I didn't lose money, I'm totally fine. Like we're yeah. all cool with like going wherever. So like we got to go to Chicago. We played Seattle twice. Or Tacoma and then Seattle and like um, you know random things like that. It's like that's what we're looking to do. So it's yeah. kind of like we'll play once or twice a year, um, you know, and 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 not totally burn it because we've seen that all too often, especially in New York with like reunion bands. Mm. Like now, it's I don't even consider ourselves a reunion band. We're just a band that hasn't put out a record in a long time, but we play like <laughs> relatively often, and often enough that it's not like it's there's no kind of you know no no grand push it's kind of like yeah. oh cool and this is playing with sick of it all or this yeah playing here. i kind of like that like we play here and there like we'll play a local thing in march and then we'll play you know somewhere else in the country um in november and but like right, right. there's no pressure for that but i you know if there's anything that you know anyone who maybe took hardcore a little for granted before the pandemic is that like yeah. things will pop up and like um so like a lot of moments in hardcore are fleeting. So that indecision set that comes up that you're like, that is, you know, a four hour flight, a 12 hour drive, whatever it is. Right. Like that might be the only one that you get for like a number of years. So right. Yeah, and that's why that's not as important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, and usually it's fests that have worked just because it's like, it's not cheap to fly five adults and equipment places. So right. it's like, we could never expect someone in like Chicago to be like, we do a one-off on a Saturday. Like, unless it's tied to like a larger thing. Right. I, I can't say that we're worth fucking $3,000. Whatever the price may be to get sure. flights. And, you know, we got to bring guitars and snares and all this kind of crap. Yeah. Um, I don't bring anything. I just bring clothes. Yeah. But like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and my cheery personality, I guess. I don't know. Um, but usually it's been like festivals because it kind of, it, it's factored into like the, 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 what it's going to cost for the whole thing for sure um but i mean yeah and i think you know we've been lucky to be able to kind of do stuff like that um and you know and haven't burned it out yet you know and like it's, it's i say i feel like we play infrequent infrequently enough that it's still kind of like you know our friends that can go out twice a year that's one of their nights mm -hmm. and they're still we're lucky that younger folks there's some young folks that still care yeah yeah it is cool because i remember i was like kind of perusing uh through the through the Instagrams and I guess like I didn't I I must have not known about you guys when I saw the um the poster for this but when it when it was the knocked loose a different shade of blue uh release show right and uh, I think you guys played like right under them and you know no pressure yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, fuck <laughs> yeah but I, I do think that's cool to like you know like knocked loose is one of those bands that have brought this like new wave of kids into like that heavy music like Absolutely. not even hardcore but just like heavy music space um and to see like uh like a band like that just like right beforehand it's like oh like this like this is cool it's kind of the same thing when 
like I, I I've heard it multiple times on the podcast where terror has played with like those certain bands that are maybe more metal or maybe more right. Uh, right. metal core leading. Um, and then just, they get put onto hardcore that way. So I think that's always really cool to see. Yeah. I mean, especially that show when it came up, like um, Vitalo was like, knock loose wants you to play their record release. Show. I was like, fuck. All right. Like I had known Isaac um, and Brian for a little bit. I was like, cool, man. That's fucking awesome. Like those right. dudes are legit. Fuck. You know? And like, we had them on the podcast relatively early. Oh, okay. So, um, they were on a tour. I forget who they were on a tour with, but it was before, like, I think, you know, them being on kind of opened up eyes to like a lot of people like, Oh, these kids are like actual hardcore kids. Right. And not just someone, I mean, no disrespect to anybody who does like, we're just, you know, don't only just listen to a Muir, mm-hmm. right. you know, like Brian's like talking about like killing time and like all these older bands and stuff like that. So like, right. Vital hit me up. So I hit up the band and like our drummer, who's like, more of like a serious XM kind of guy than a than a let me check out the newest seven inch on triple B kind of guy. Sure. Yeah, yeah. He was like, Are you fucking with me? I go, why would I be messing with you? And he was like, Knocked Loose wants us to play their record release show. He's like, they're like my favorite band. I go, Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he and, and and he's like, they know I'm like, what am I making this up? Like, of course, yeah. yes, they asked us to play. And like we they were looking for another band to play right before us another older band that were kind of like being wishy-washy about it. So I was like, what about mind force? Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. Vital was like, fuck, that's a great, perfect. Mm-hmm. And like getting to play with karma, getting to play with judiciary, like both bands fucking ruled. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, and, but for us to go, like I looked at it a few, fe- like a few of the flyers more recently. And I was like, like you, like you idiot got put in like a, Tough, like we were like right before foundation at the last foundation show or yeah. right before knocked loose that was like that was one million percent their show right, there right. were some kids that knew us like definitely you know like there were enough kids that like like you said it's like this is a fleeting moment they're not coming to wherever i live so i might have to take the five hour road trip to louisville to see them mm-hmm. you know there's a thousand twelve hundred people waiting for knocked loose and like we're the half hour between that and <laughs> the, you know what i mean them and that right so it was tough, but like it was super. Everyone was like super receptive. It was a we had such a fucking blast. Like yeah. they, and the Knox Loose dudes are like incredibly sweet, and you know for them to like just put us on that was just so fucking cool. Like I couldn't thank them enough. Yeah, because I think most bands, when a bigger band is reaching out to them to go on tour to play a bigger right. show, like that's always those like, whoa, like we look up to you guys, so it's really cool. So it's it's interesting to see the reverse of that, where it's like you know, almost like they respect you guys so much that they're like, yeah, we should bring on this band, you know, and kind of have it in that kind of cycle. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, we're, we've been very fortunate with stuff like that, that people like kind of look out, you know, like have taken a liking to us and like want to look out for us and want to like expose their fans. to like what the stuff that we do, it's fine. We're like, we've been super lucky. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I know one thing that I wanted to touch on and uh, yes. I apologize if, if you've talked about this a number of times, but this is something that um, was interestingly, like I had first heard about it um, through the under the influence uh, New York hardcore documentary that vice, or I, I guess it was noisy noises. Noisy is like yes. through voice vice. Yep. Um, yep. They were talking about, um, I think it was the, the soldier tattoo kind of stuff yes. that kind of like blew up. So uh, for those that don't know, um, you could probably bring, to light some of those things but um some indecision uh lyrics uh from one of the first albums was tattooed on the side of a soldier's body who was being like hell lifted out of um yeah he was like medevaced yeah yeah being worked on yeah Yeah. so in the documentary they were touching on that i think it was your uh james is your guitar player's name justin 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 okay i was i was one j name it's close (laughs) But uh, he he was talking about that, and I was like, oh yeah, that, that's that's really cool. Um, I don't know if he wrote the lyric or and you just sang it or like, yeah. Tell me about some of those things and how crazy that was for you. Um, and any context sure. that I missed there. Sure, sure. So yeah, there was a lyric that like so Justin and I um, worked on everything together. So it was kind of like we'd almost have like piles of stuff, and like I'd kind of piece it together and. And like, you know, kind of place it in the music, you know, and it was never like, here's a full song done. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, we'd write and then I'd figure out what would sound okay with that stuff and then go from there. Yeah. So with, with the soldier, um, um, James Hicken bottom, I think his name was. Um, so 
I, you know, all of a sudden it's in like Time Magazine or something, and it's like one of the like pictures of the year and all this sort of stuff. And he's got our tattoo on the side. We're like, holy shit, you know, and like, uh, you know, so we um, we did a, a benefit shirt for him to raise money to retrofit his house because he was going to be um, like wheelchair, like in a wheelchair for. Oh, okay, sure. So we ended up like doing like. I don't know. I forget. We raised like twenty or thirty thousand dollars to be able to put in like all these ramps and kind of really kind of get his house prepared for his return home and all sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so Justin meets the guy and everything, and he was like, "So, you know," and 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 the dude is like, "I have no idea who your band is." Oh, <laughs> and Justin's like, "What?" And he's like, "I saw it on a tattoo shop wall and I really liked it." And then it became like like a marine thing. Oh, so okay. I cannot tell you more often than not. If you see somebody in the wild with a for those all of our sacrifice tattoo, that is not an indecision tattoo anymore. <laughs> because like people be like, "Hey, man, I I make like I can't tell you how like my friends will be at like a you know out at the beach or like at a place where, where like you can see the beginnings of it." And the guy like, "Yo, let me take that picture of that tattoo." And like you like indecision, and they'd be like, "What?" <laughs> like they have yeah. no idea what's going on. <laughs> so this guy didn't really know, and he's like, "No, nah, I really like Christian, like Christian rock," and I'm like, "Don't." give him the records then because he's not gonna be happy um so like he you know he was super really kind and like justin got to meet him yeah you know and kind of and and do a bunch of stuff with the guy but like yeah he had no idea what it was oh wow that's it so was great crazy. and we're like fuck and i'm like well, well i'm like it's so it's so awesome mm-hmm. but it became more of like a flash tattoo than uh I like this band. Right. I really yeah. Cause I think when I saw that documentary, like noisy really played it up that it's like, these things are connected, but like he- hearing it straight from you guys are like, no, he, nah. yeah. This guy, liked- I never met him. <laughs> I never met the dude. So like when Justin's like, yeah, he had no idea who the fuck we were. I was like, awesome. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's pretty much poor for the course. Yeah. Um, well, and, and- I mean, it doesn't take anything away from it. It's just, it's so cool, but it's like, it has nothing to, uh, we happened to write the words and then it just got out there. And then yeah. Yeah. Became a thing. Yeah, that that is too funny because it, it is really, one of those yeah. things where it's not just like, like, like there's enough words where it's like in your mind, you're like, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, like I was, I was listening to the song today even, and I was like, not to like, like there's, there's people from so many different walks of life who, you know, are in service in the military and some of those sure. things. So I guess I was just trying to like, think about how maybe he got that tattoo as like a meaning for his family. I was like trying to piece it together but i guess it was just something where i was like yeah that looks cool i'll put that I'll yeah put that i mean or race. maybe he's like you know for my fellow marines this is what i got or whatever it is yeah and that's cool i mean that's totally fine yeah it's really not what the lyric is <laughs> right. in the grand scheme of things right. you know um the second half gets cut off and all of it it actually started funny enough on that tour that i talked about that ended in vancouver poor terribly right one day we were going to a place i f- we were playing in augusta georgia or something and Silent Majority and Millhouse were like, we're going to be late to the show, but we'll see you there. And they showed up and they all got it. Oh, okay. So they were the first people to ever get it. Interesting. Okay. So it was like a small like crew thing that we all had it. Gotcha. Then it became like a tattoo that like hardcore kids got. Mm-hmm. And then it became a tattoo that like. That Time Magazine extra, promoted. Like, <laughs> yeah. That it's like, you know, it's next to like a lotus flower and like, you know, like a, like a, dr- like a dream catcher. It's right. just like a thing. Um. Yeah, so it doesn't, you know, like I bought like a like a year in review magazine, like book, like a time, you know, that, you know, you see that. I mean, it's an incredibly heavy picture. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like if it said a fucking hate read lyric or if it said nothing, it's still like, <laughs> holy shit, you know. Right. It just so happened to be something that we were tangentially involved in. Yeah. You know? Do, do yeah. you feel like, uh, you know, something at that time, like I think that there was. I, I, I was I was reading an article and it was funny because I don't think that um, that at, at least I don't know if it was time if they actually like promoted the band or said the band name. They just said like punk band or like band like. Yeah, yeah it never w- got was promoted there... as an indecision thing. <laughs> it was just like Justin got interviewed on on some of those things. Um, yeah. You know, for people that may have known, you know, because I was just talking about this with Greg, like, you know, punk and hardcore kids have like infiltrated everywhere. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like there may be somebody, you know, a photographer at time that is actually a hardcore kid that was like, I know who wrote that or, you know, right, right, right. put stuff together. But like normal civilian person's not ever they're not going to Google that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah. So do you. Um, yeah. It's funny that you like I, I do think that there are I it's weird being 
in this space and seeing people go and kill it and do like really crazy things. And it's almost like cooler because they were in the hardcore world or they know of that. Um, I yeah. know um, there's a photographer I follow on Instagram. Uh, I, I'm blanking on his last name, but his first name, Adam, he was like doing a lot of like DI, I, like he's someone that I would love to have on the podcast, honestly, because He's from Minneapolis. He was doing a lot of like booking of the shows there um, sure. back in like probably like the late 2010s. And now he's like the full time photographer of like Post Malone. And so it's like so crazy to like. Right, right. Yeah. Like obviously there's like some of those things where, you know, like um, Austin knows about heavy music and, and comes from that world as well. But to right. see, I think I have him on Facebook now and I'll like. Like if I search his name, it'll be like, yo, we're doing this all ages thing. It's like now you're on tour with one of the biggest like hip hop stars of all time. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Playing arenas and stuff in front of 20,000 screaming people every night. Yeah. And and even on like a even smaller scale, I remember when I was first getting into hardcore, people in the local scene were uh, freaking out that um, Lay's Chips did this like contest where there was all these different people that submitted all these like kind of wacky flavors flavors right right yeah yeah and some some guy from i i don't know if it's edmonton or calgary but he was from the hardcore scene played in bands and he was like in the top two and you're like if this if we're gonna have a hardcore like dude that <laughs> made the next lace chip like fucking crazy we made it we made, we made it. it we finally made it yeah. we all did if he makes we all make it yeah. right right chips at every lays only at the hardcore shows um going forward <laughs> right right um, yeah i mean it's we we've inter you know like I, i've met people that are like art therapists i've met, met people that are like you know higher ups and ceos and stuff that are like I used to go see Converge. I'm like, you know, it's like people, you know. <laughs> right. It's just so strange when those those worlds like kind of clang up against each other. You're like, wait, what? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> what is this? That, this is so, you know, like yeah. my friends are derelicts when we were hardcore kids. Like what is happening that all these folks went on to become like great thing, you know, and be involved in such great stuff. Yeah. Know? Yeah. It's it's so funny. Like you, you were bringing up uh, a ROM, like for him to be such a, a badass, like businessman now. Incredible. But like, you know, still like, jumping around and playing in bands and doing like the hardcore thing for so long. Like I love seeing that, uh, that, that, um, like I dichotomy guess. almost. Yes, absolutely. It's a, and it's feasible. You can do that. Absolutely. And be, yeah. And still be involved in a, in a real way mm -hmm. and be like, you know, an active member, a participant and be able to kind of do stuff, you know, like it doesn't, it, you don't have to choose necessarily. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I love that you kind of uh, clarified some of the things on the indecision <laughs> sure. side. Um, I do want to chat about Colossus as well because that's sure. the newest thing. You know, you know, Absolutely. indecision hasn't put out uh, a new record in almost twenty years, but uh, yeah. in the last year, I, I, it was at the beginning of this year actually that you guys dropped. That. Yeah, it came out uh, February actually, end of February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about that idea. Uh, I think this whole pandemic time has like really encourage people to do like little one-off things, little side bands. Um, and like, has that been in the works for years? And then it was like, now's the time to do it. Or wh what, what, what influenced that? Sure. Sure. Um, so I've been friendly with the mind force dudes for a while. Um, we played some of uh, some of their earlier shows. Like they played, with, um, first time I saw them, they played with us indecision, gorilla biscuits, Rest in pieces and and terror, I think. Okay. Um, oh, and God's hate in in a in a Webster Hall in Manhattan, and I was like, this band's fucking amazing. And then it ended up being like, oh, we know a bunch of the same people. Yeah. So we became friendly, um, you know. And I've been like a huge like Mind Force supporter over the years on like the podcast and stuff. And you know, we became really really close, all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, one day, um, Jay texted me. He's like, um, hey, uh, so we wrote some songs for you. Would you do it? And I was like. All right. So I guess he had, they went, recorded the whole thing. Okay. Sent it to Bob first. Oh, and we're like, okay. Do you yeah, think yeah. he'll do this? And, and Bob's like, yeah, I think so. And Jay was like, you know, we wanted you to have something current. Like you deserve to be, have something current. Mm. Cause I mean, indecision has been literally talking since we've gotten back together. They're like we got to write some stuff. And I'm like, we get like, we have like a song we've been together for 12 <laughs> years now. It's like, right. you know, cause now, now we practice just in time, in terms, uh, in time for a show. Yes. Like, we're not like getting, you know, Rachel lives on Cal Rachel lives in California. The other dudes have like 
children one's a, a city councilman so it's like we're not like just getting together in the basement to jam for four hours it's kind of like right. let's ro- run through the set once if we can get through it without joking and and killing time for an hour like mm-hmm. let's actually get this stuff done right so jay was like you know we really think like you still have you know you should still be involved and i'm like oh, i really appreciate that so they're like uh here's the songs i'm like wow all right all it already recorded like as you hear it on on the record that's what it is yeah and then i got that in like uh maybe like September. And then we were trying to figure out a way to get, uh, so Jack from age of apocalypse own, is like starting his own studio, which is where they recorded gotcha. um, okay. up in like Western Massachusetts. So like one day, like Jay and I like took a ride up there. It's probably like four hours from New York and like went in like the, I did it once and I was like, I don't love it, but like, they were so nice. They're like, no, it's great. I'm like, give me like, give me 10 minutes. Let me just like, so I like went back into like, you know when i used to like actually warm up and stuff like for shows and tours and stuff so i did that and i went back in and it was pretty much like one take damn okay so yeah. like we have so. never played together we still haven't played together i have no like like there, someone's yeah. like oh you should do like uh there was talks about us doing the 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 van show that walter schreifels does oh okay yeah, and yeah. they're like how you know you want to do it i'm like we, we actually haven't played in the same room so like i have no idea how this would go like right. i wrote those songs like listening to it on my phone and then I went into a studio with one other person, like two other people there. I'm like, I have no idea. Like we have to actually practice these songs for me to do it right. Right. Yeah. So all that stuff was kind of like, once I got past like the, like taking off some of the rust, that was like one take. And then that was it. It yeah. was like, they took maybe two or three hours to write the songs or record the songs. I was done in maybe three hours and that was it. Then yeah. we had a mixed record. And yeah. Then- it's so crazy with all the new things that are popping up and like, yeah, I know you guys have talked about it on the podcast, um, but just like how crazy some of the those first sets are going to be, like for bands like Pain of Truth or Gridiron or like shit like that. Like, like, because you look, I'm like, oh, there's tons of people listening to these records, and no one's seen it yet. Right. Yes. Like it's incredible. Like it's yeah. just so nuts. Like, um, I mean, even like you know, God's like God's hate, like that. It's gonna be in like that. The, that first show back is gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> yes, they were known already, but like that record was such a thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, and Gulch and Drain, like Drain played once one show off of that record. Mm-hmm. One. You know what I mean? Uh, right? I think it was one. I think they played. I think because it came out after LDB, maybe. It came out after L- LDB. They did play Cali, that one backyard played, like, show that, where they I filmed think. like the video and stuff for. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, that's, I mean, that's going to be insane. Yeah. I think Gulch even had, um, Tsunami yeah. as well, because they've only played one show ever. They only played that one show that looks like it's in, like, someone's house? Yes. No, shit. Oh, that'll yes. be ridiculous, too? Yeah. I, I think, I mean, but, was, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy to see all the new stuff that's coming through. And just, right. again, it's like, everyone's just like, I always say this, like everyone's in their Mario Kart, like carts just waiting for that green light to go <laughs> like officially. And it's just going to be like 150 star power all the way through. Oh, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. Yeah. San Jose is going to be a very dangerous place with all those bands. <laughs> um, you know, just going back to Colossus, um, sure. you know, what would be kind of like a perfect five band show that, you know, Colossus would be opening up. So you would get to pick the remaining four bands. That, oh, wow. that you would like to play with. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I th- If they could do it, I would love to play with Mind Force. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Incendiary Headlining. Cat. It, we'll, we'll keep it all New York. Just Sure, you know, yeah, yeah. Lo- locals only kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, because there's so many bands. I'd be like, it would be a 50-band bill, and we'd be on the first step. <laughs> we'd be on at like 10.30 a.m., and it would suck for us. Um, incendiary. 10.30 a.m. the next day. <laughs> Yeah, it's like cool. All right, anybody yeah, we throw out bagels or something. Um some mosh and nosh. So we'll go incendiary, mind force, Somerset Thrower, uh Pain of Truth, and then us opening. That would be, be that. a badass. Cool. It's a nice yeah, different that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean there's so much good newer stuff coming out. Um yeah, I mean, hopefully there'll be venues for people to play in and shows for, to happen and things will open up, you know, and how's everything in in, in, in Calgary? Is it? Um, I feel like um, 
Well, you know, definitely as far as Canada goes, like Ontario is the worst, but I think that's mainly due just to the number of people that are people, within right. that province. Sure. But, you know, Calgary is like one of those places that has a lot of people that don't, you know, are like anti-mask or like propaganda individuals. So like, right. I feel like there would always be these things where it's like masks are mandatory, but like I go to the grocery store and see kids young uh young adults to actual adults not wearing them and now it was only in the last week that it's like a mandatory mandatory mask and in fact i'm like this right is so, right yeah so but this far into it right yeah so and are there rules about like gatherings or like where oh, you can yes. go and we, yeah, yeah 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 there's been a lot of things where you know endgame is trying to set up time to record and or even just practice to record sure. and then shit doesn't line up um so wow. Wow. yeah so i i feel like it's one of those struggles i don't feel like we're too far away from um from ontario but it is strange to see so many people because i i know i think i know you are like 100 percent 100 percent vaccinated majority of yeah. people in my age bracket are getting their second shot and i'm like right my grandparents are getting their second shot in a couple of weeks so like it we are time, so yeah. behind the ball on that regard yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, in the States, especially, it's kind of like, well, we have a ton of these vaccines and like, not enough people to, that are willing to take them now. Like, <laughs> everyone that wanted it got them up, you know, like got going. And then it's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, the, the way the divide is like most Republicans in the States won't take it. Yes. Yeah. Which is just crazy. Because it's kind of like, then you're not doing anyone like you're going to impact stuff opening or opening and closing back. I mean, who the hell knows? You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think nuts. I heard on the radio in, I don't know if it's in Calgary specifically or if it's all of Canada, but I think it was like, there's 15% of people who said that they won't get it. And then if you add on people that are like unsure, that's like 28%. And I'm like, that's almost a third. Like that's yeah, right, fucking right. scary. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's tough because I I've been so over just like having to talk about the pandemic every single day of Same. my life yeah. since March. Yeah. Um, I try to avoid it as much as I can, but sure, then it's always no, like course. I'm calling my mom and they're like, "How's your day?" It's like, "Oh, lockdown." I'm like, "All right, check that box that I talked about COVID for the day." <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 impossible not to. It's been such a thing for so. I mean, it's impacted everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it just. Which is a rare thing because how often, how ma how many things are out there that are like are actually impacting every human being on the globe? Yes, like that doesn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, it's not even like oh, like you didn't like how many times you like you didn't see this crazy season finale of this wildly right. known show. Um, right, right. But it's yeah, like, oh, that's like a percentage of of the overall. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. So it's yeah. crazy to be like you know whether whether I'm meeting someone in like yugoslavia or like literally wherever in the world we we could talk about what you do in the pandemic How did that right that's the you? one shared yeah, yeah. imagine <laughs> that's your shared experience it's like it sucks that and stay staying home all week all, all year right and it's yeah like, yeah <laughs> you know so like talking um about the weather yes talking about um you know maybe transitioning from from pandemic things you know podcasting sure. in general has really sure. like shot up um you know it, it's very interesting how this podcast started just before things went down and that forced me to kind of shift it so we can do it in this way versus in person. Sure. Um, but yeah, let's talk about extra grind. Um, sure. So you guys started that like, like a few years earlier than maybe this kind of upswing. Um, so yeah. tell me about just like the initial idea of how Patrick, um, yourself and Tom, or sorry, Bob, Bob, all like came together and were like, "Hey, like, let's talk about hardcore and um, and let's kind of start there because I think there's some interesting points that we can break down." Sure, sure. So, um, I think we started at the end of 2017 at this point. Yes, I think it was right. So, maybe a year or two before that, Pat and I did a, a two episodes of Death Talk, which was like the the, the Death Witch Inc. podcast. Oh, okay. So and I've known Pat for years and years. Like he recorded, a, he filmed an MTB, MPB video in like 2001. So I've known him probably for 20 years at this point. Mm. Um, and it, we did it. It was fun. And, he, you know, I'd run into him and like I saw him at, 
uh, Code Orange, uh, Forever, Code Orange Forever, like record release show in New York. Okay. And he was there with his partner at the time. And he was like, we still got to do that podcast. And I was like, yeah, all right. Like, I'm never thinking it was going to happen. So then uh, we were in a group chat. It was um, Pat and I, Bob, who I knew, but not as well, and Justin Close Casket. And we were talking about the podcast. We're like, yeah, we're going to get this going. And then I was like, and, you know, I was like, Bob, would, would you want to be, like, involved? And he's like, all right. So, like, we kind of, like, we're like, I, I mean, and he's like a treasure trove. Like, he's got knowledge, like, nobody's business. So he's like, he can check us on everything because it's like, Pat likes three things. I like a lot, but I don't have any of the specifics down. But Bob yeah. is like a little bit of everything. So, like, we're like, cool. And, like, um, Pat wanted to kind of do it which is funny because it worked out the opposite. Um, Joe Budden, the rapper, has a podcast, right? So he's the older gentleman on the show, and he hates everything. Oh, okay. He has a younger, two younger friends that like kind of defend current day hip hop and R and B and stuff like that. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's how he saw it. But like, I think he saw me as the Joe Budden. But I was like, I like a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it didn't really work out that way. Yeah, I was gonna say like Patrick sometimes seems to be the, on that. Yeah, on that so end he, he kind of took the villain thing, <laughs> right? Um, and then it was gonna be like Axe to Grind because we were, at first it was it, not that it was like the only idea, but like it was gonna be a little bit more negative. Okay, and kind of like calling out the bullshit as we see it. Oh, okay, interesting. And then it was just kind of like, ah, you know what? We don't really want to bring that energy to mm. this, to hardcore and stuff. So it was kind of like, here's the other stuff we can be doing, mm. which I think was a much better decision. And like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be like, I hate when bands do this or this band sucks. Or like, I don't want to do that. Like, that's there's no need for that. So like, right. it kind of turned around to kind of like, well, to have a two hour block of that is one thing to to have a 20 minute little ramble off of a certain yeah. topic it is, is another yeah 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 and i think you know then it was kind of like you know we started we had friends on and like we kind of in the beginning similar to what you were saying like you know you'd only do the like have have, ho have guests on in person mm -hmm. you know so that was like the thing so like to you know probably to our own detriment sometimes like you know we have a ton of folks and friends of, you know, around the country, around the world that we'd love to have on, but it's like, well, when you get, when you come through town, yes, you know, we'll have you in. Yeah. But it was like, you know, some people don't tour, you know what I mean? Or like, mm -hmm. you know, like we always like talk about like, you know, like having like Colin Young on or Taylor or, you know, whoever, you know, and it's kind of like, if they're not coming through on tour, then we're not going to have them. Yeah. So like this kind of opened us up to kind of doing it virtually, you know, and having, you know, we're able to get, you know, kind of expand our, um, our like, guest reach yes um and then it's kind of you know it's become its own thing and we had no rec you know like i had no idea <laughs> it was just kind of like we're gonna talk about hardcore yeah like, all right and then it was kind of like oh people seem like pretty into it and then it was like oh shit people are really into it and then it kind of we were like we locked that like we had no preconceived notions and we didn't have a plan it was just kind of like right it's like we it was always the idea was like this is you and two of your friends out in like the parking lot after a show or like when you go to the diner after the show or yeah, whatever. I love just that like, analogy because that's like literally just shooting. Yeah, just like chatting, you know, to an extent. I mean, we're definitely because we've all had the conversations at, you know, in the parking lot or outside a show that were like, that band was fucking terrible. But like, we're not going to do that. We've <laughs> yeah. all had that conversation. Where like, they're not like, that's a good up. piece of content. Let's send that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like well, there's no need. You know what I mean? Like everyone is doing what they're you know, their very best. I'm like, there's no need to be a shithead about it. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm cool with like putting people on blast that need to be put on blast for, you know, misogynistic things or racist things or anything like fuck those people. Yeah. But if it's like, Hey man, you're doing your level best and you know, it may not be for me, but like it's for somebody else. Yeah. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like not everyone's buying, you know, picking up what I'm putting in, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's, we're all, you know, like, it's fine. Like we can all do this together. Yeah. And that's, I hope that we kind of created that space that like people feel like they can share music. Mm -hmm. You know, we were able to kind of do, we were used to do like those like radio, like the listening parties that we, cause we we're all in the same room. So we could have like an, a real time conversation. Right. We haven't been able to figure that out, how to do that over the internet. So okay. we started doing like radio shows and stuff. I played you guys on my radio show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that is very cool that the, before I ask the next question, cause I want to yes. tangent off that. Um, are you guys um, all using the same streaming service? Because I know Spotify, and I only know this because I, I'm help I'm 
help producing a podcast for, for a friend of mine. And we, and it's a, like kind of a listening style thing. So there's a, right. a, a beta feature through Spotify where you can do a session. And even if people are in totally different areas, someone like is uh, essentially the host of that session and can play the music and everyone listens to it uh, in real time. So oh. I, I'll maybe gotcha. we can chat about yeah. that a little bit later. That would be awesome. But because yeah, um, we were trying to figure out like just like the kind of logistics and kind of like, you know, if if Pat's off by a second, everything mm-hmm. he throws off, you know, what yes. I mean? then it's a mess. Yes. So it's kind of like that was our biggest concern. So like we started like Bob came up with the idea of like doing like like fake like, you know, rock and roll radio shows. Yeah. And like then we'd you know, I, pick. I love the episode. Uh, I think it was like the Arnold Schwarzenegger styled one. That was me. That was you. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm a big Arnold fan myself. So I was like, all right, I can listen to three hours of this for Because sure. I was the Tominator. Yeah. Tominator. And then I, like, had the, yeah. <laughs> Stupid. We were like, let's come up with like, because we were going to do it like, do we do it on our regular voices? And Bob like had a pitch shifter on his or Pat or somebody. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That's what we should do. And yes. we, so like I are trying to like this. And then I had like, I picked like different commercials and like, um, and yeah, and I picked some like Terminator lines. Okay, well, yeah, we're jumping yes. around here, but what is your Sorry. what's what's your all time favorite Arnold flick that I can ask you? Uh, all time favorite, I gotta go Terminator Two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel, I like, feel that like, was like if a, you have to say one, that that's definitely up there. It's got a right. I mean, they're all there's a lot ones. of great ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember seeing like Commando as a kid and being like, "What the fuck is happening? There's so much blood." Yes. Or like him like breaking the guy's neck next to him in on the plane mm-hmm. and then, like. He's sleeping like you know like, that's what like. <laughs> but like but i remember like and you, i mean you're obviously too young for this but like like when terminator 2 came out it was like a phenomenon like i fucking like the guns and roses song and like it was like the biggest thing you could possibly imagine mm-hmm. and it's a great fucking movie oh yeah great still movie. stands to, to to the test of time I, I yeah like- yeah i mean the other ones are fun too yeah predator's great you know what I mean? Commando's great. Like, but I feel like that one was just like mm-hmm. optimal Arnold. Right. Um, if I if I have to do a close second, um, yeah. I'm a I love Total Recall. I love that whole right. premise uh yeah. of that movie. Um and and if we want to give a, a holiday shout out, uh, you know, jingle all the, jingle way. All the way for sure. Sure, no, of course. I mean, put yeah, the you know. cookie down. No <laughs> <laughs> like kindergarten cop, there's so many. He's yes. He's really he's he's a gift. He's a treasure. Yeah, like, man, like I one of the first jobs I had, um, I have to shout out my uh, my old boss Chris because he was like, okay, here's a list of all the amazing like Arnold movies that are like so bad they're good, and then I started yes. to like just check them off. So I think I have Eraser uh, on DVD somewhere. In, wow. In that's... The, yeah, like. <laughs> that's deep cut yeah yeah the uh at the very end where the uh, like this is not a spoiler for anyone that's gonna well it is a spoiler but no one but yeah if you haven't out. seen it by now you're not yeah. gonna watch it yeah yeah it's that time frame um just like the limo stuck on the train tracks and then they get the call it's like you've been erased and then the train just the train fucking blows it up <laughs> i love that He's the um, best. yeah he, he is the best um but uh oh yeah so i wanted to chat with you uh you know you were talking about the the radio shows and Mm -hmm. some of those things but um i wanted to ask you because i always find this with anyone that grows any level of social influence especially within hardcore there's always people that will kind of like come and and not like hold you accountable but will say like hey like you really need to like feature this really small band versus talking about like every band that's on triple B, every band that's on close cast, it like there's, al- there's always this like almost like cry for, for help because it is really hard to have your music break through some sure. of the, the bigger names like that. So where, where do you guys land on that? Where it's like, okay, like we can't do one episode just about this small little demo, but we can do this episode that features, you know, 50 different things you know, newer things or smaller things. Uh, where, where does your mind go with that? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, that's when we kind of do, did the listening parties and the, the radio show, just to kind of like get a, a you know, a, kind of get a larger pool of folks that were work, you know, that we're able to kind of play, you know, and it's sometimes it's brand new bands. It's bands that are like, Hey, here's a new single from a band that you already know, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I think there's going to be bias because we're primarily three Northeastern New York, you know, primarily New York and New Jersey people. So like right. there may be a band, you know, from somewhere in like South Dakota that we may not be privy to, but like, we're more than happy to like send us stuff. Like that's what we asked for. Like send us whatever you like. But I think sometimes the energy is sent in a weird way that it's kind of like, you guys got to stop talking about blah, blah, blah. And you need to start talking about, and it's like some yes. band that's like, right. like maybe not don't come at like, like we're doing as you know the amount of prep that goes into a lot of these shows it's like we're not just like turning the mics on and like fucking winging it like we listen to so much shit to kind of prepare for this so it's like hey man like i'm all for like you know like you know we found you guys but if you were like hey another band from calgary that i think you might be into send it over like we're happy to like you know we we want to kind of you know be able to kind of promote as many folk you know like we're not going to know every European band, but yes. if you want to, if we're Australian bands or whatever, like shoot us an email. Like we're, we, you know, and let us know and we'll check it out. And like, you know, if we have time and if we dig it, then we'll play it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the three of us have such divergent tastes that it's like, someone's going to like it mm-hmm. yeah. out of the three of us. You know what I mean? Pat has actually the most like meathead tendencies of all of us, which is funny. Yeah. Like I'm like the Brooklyn guy who like grew up in Marauder, but he's the guy who likes beat down stuff. You know, Bob likes more fast hardcore. I like a little bit of everything. Mm. So it's like, just you know, I feel like how you how folks approach it is kind of more of a thing than any. You know, like yes, we're open to anything. But yeah. I mean, I mean, you have bands. We all have bands that it's kind of like you don't know about this band that had a demo on for two years in two thousand nine. Like, mm. no. yeah. but it could have been the biggest thing in the world to you, and that's awesome. Might yeah. have been a big thing to me but put us onto it hip us to it that's totally cool like i'm all for it yeah i i but like you can't be mad at us for not being able to like there's not a special app that tells me every hardcore record that ever come out like yeah it's- yeah i think the biggest point there is like if, if you want to link up with call it uh and this like i'm sure people listening will cringe when i utter these words but a hardcore influencer because those exist Oof, they? <laughs> well i i like thing? like I think a band being filmed by someone like Hey Five Six, like he's he's a hardcore influencer. I, yeah, I but, but by default, almost by yeah. default. You know, yeah. even even someone that does um, like album reviews, like I wouldn't say like he's a like a hardcore influencer, but like Anthony Fantano, who's like sure a very avid like will touch any anything in the music world. Um, I, I think I'm trying to remember one of the last like hardcore album reviews. That's not important. The main, the right. main thing that I'm trying to hit on is like, if you're trying to link up with scoped axe to grind, yeah. fill in the blank person, I think really building a, an actual relationship that isn't focused on like this secret intent of like, Oh, once I get the feature on no echo, it's, it's game over for it's this off. band. Right, or, it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause there's been times that bands have reached out to me and it's like, Hey, like, like, here's our album. It's not out yet. If you want to listen to it, that'd be great. And, you know, depending on the day, it's like, yeah, I, I can check it out. And then the product's really good. And then I build that relationship and then, you know, have them on the podcast. So that to me is way more interesting versus like, like, I won't say the band name, but there's literally a band that I put on one of our uh, Monday playlists. You right. know, they're like, oh, thanks for featuring us. And literally anything new they do, I get like a link a link a link and it's like right. not even being like yo man i really like that episode you know like kind yeah, of following right, right, right. what you're doing so like i like i am not one of those people that will like block people but i had to like restrict their account because i'm like dude like it's too much it's too right, many right, right. Like, like i don't need you got to your see bite at the apple like I, you, you got a shot of it yeah yeah i don't need to see the drum cam of this song like like cool <laughs> but like that like how, what am i supposed to do with that like Right, right. Like, yeah. I'm like, hey, man, he, this drum fill at two minutes and 32 seconds is incredible. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, I think we're more, you know, I, it's funny. Like, I'll, Bob usually handles a lot of the emails, but we all, like, you know, well, Pat doesn't read them, but I read them. <laughs> um, you know, and it'll, someone will be like, here's my new band and like send us like a band camp link. Mm. And Bob would be like, describe it. Like, what do you think this sounds like? Mm. And kind of like, let's have a, like a like a discussion and not just you like throw content at us. And yeah. like the blind you know, like, carbon copy to everyone. 
Right. Like, what yeah. are you going for? Right. You know, you might be going for no warning, but I, now I listen to it. I hear something out like, what, mm. let's just like, let's vibe off. Like, let's discuss it. You know, and we, he does, we do that on like Twitter and in the emails. It's kind of like, it's not like you, we're not like, a, you know, it's, there's like, it's not like payola that you're like, you throw us 20 bucks. We're going to play like, no, let's have a conversation. Right. Why, why, you know, and not that you have to prove yourself or anything, but it's kind of like, let's have a chat. Like when you started this band, what were you going for? Mm-hmm. I, we loved Madball. All right. That's a start. Let's talk. Mm-hmm. And like kind of figure it out and like make it more of a discussion than like kind of just like this weird transaction that it's like, yeah, I send you a band camp, you play us on your show and then we're stuff done. happens or yeah, not yeah. happens or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think it's just weird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, just be to me, the biggest thing is like, be respectful. And whether it be you're saying like, you're just getting like shitty links thrown at you or you know, kind of like berating, like berating us for not knowing, you know, a Southern California band from 2004. Like, right. there's so much stuff out there. Like, things are bound to be missed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the biggest band in the world to you may not ex- may not even be known in Atlanta. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, let's just have a conversation. That's the whole point. Yeah. We're trying to bring up like the discourse about hardcore. That's pretty much all it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I think it, it's it's. <laughs> it's one of two things where it's either if you are seeing a gap in like, man, like, like, because extra grind is based in like that Northeastern quadrant, yeah. maybe so, some things aren't talking about do the podcast that focuses only on California or only shit in the Midwest. Like, you know, like you can always like do that. But if you like the only way that something is going to be done, um, that you want to s- see done by is by yourself. Like it was the exact same thing for me. Um, right. like, Nobody was filming bands up here in Canada. And I was like, I want to see that. So I'm going to do it. And now it's blossomed into this huge conglomerate. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. And it's going to be, I mean, like, you know, we like people are like, are you going to do, you know, a 2000s, um, like Christian metal, like, you know, cornerstone right. kind of thing? Sure. And I'm like, you know, Pat knows a lot about it. I'm like, full transparency. I don't, but I'm more than willing to listen. Mm-hmm. But like you, you may not get like the the real expertise that you're looking for sure. when I'm listening to you know whatever the fuck for the first time you know like overcome yeah. for the first time. I'm sorry, like I may not have it all down, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, I I think you know, I hope that we've created enough of a space that it's kind of like you can reach out to us and like fill in the blanks for us. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to take it on yourself to to start the you know Midwest podcast, and that's cool. <laughs> if you want us to help with that and like use whatever whatever platform we have to promote stuff like that cool Mm -hmm. reach out to us and 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 and, and with good energy and we'll we'll help yes you know what i'm saying like we talked about the wild and hard like you know what i mean it was like yeah it was totally it was wild and hard right i didn't it's wild rose hardcore fest yeah yeah wild rose i'm sorry no you're fine it was close (laughs) it was like two years ago i got your guitars uh name wrong you got the the regional fest that I'm a, <laughs> right. that I help out with, um, yeah, yeah. But like it totally was like fun. we saw that we're like, yeah, we love this fucking energy. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even know if anyone reached out to us, or we just saw it and we were like, I, we want to like spotlight this, right? And it was awesome because it was like you know you had like the knock, like you had the big bands, but then like all this other sort of stuff, bands from Idaho, bands from places, you know, and bands from throughout you know Calgary and and the uh, you know the northwest of. In both of our countries yeah it's right. fucking awesome yeah that's so fucking cool like it had such a great vibe that like blind spot to us yeah but you know we were able to kind of fill in the blanks and then those bands went on to become you know a lot of those earlier bands or bands that we may not have been familiar with mm-hmm. became household names later on yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? it, it's funny because i you know talked about i i've been chatting about you know wild rose largely just because i'm a part of that scene and you know yeah. like I, I filmed that fest before it was called Wild Rose back in 2016 up until, I guess, what would have been... The last year was 2019. Um, but just thinking about that lineup on the back of my head, like thinking about all the records that those bands have put out and just like how much... If that festival lineup hopefully will be realized in like a, a future year's time, obviously like there might be like a couple bands that have either broken up or can't make it anymore or sure. things like that. But right. it, even if, if it was like 90% with majority of the headliners being locked in still, I think it's going to be even crazier than what I was hoping it would, it, it was going to be for that year. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's kind of our intent was just to kind of support as much as we possibly can. 
mm-hmm. you know, and and you know, and we're open to whatever. Just just don't be a dick. Yeah. It's really not that hard, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, you know, there are some jerks out there and we've had our interact, you know, run-ins with them, but for the most part, I think it's we're just trying to be yeah, helpful and yeah. You know. And and I think it's a testament, you know, for how long you guys have been doing it and, you know, like on the surface level is like we're going to talk about hardcore for, you know, 3 hours, you know, once a yeah. week or whatever it is, but like showcasing how rich you know, the culture is and the music um, aspect and all the different nuances. Like it, even if you spent, you know, quit your job and spent all your time to listening to new music, to researching and just like learning about all of that. By the time that you had actually known about every single band in the world, there would be that many more bands. Uh, right. That You'll never catch started. up. You'll never catch up, which I think yeah. is such a beautiful thing. Oh, it's amazing. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it, and I think the best, the best emails and the best like comments that we get are like when people, people have admitted to like talking back to their stereo or their iPad or whatever they're listening to it on. Oh, because they feel like, <laughs> like they're part of the conversation, right. and that's literally all we could ever fucking hope for. Quite yeah. honestly, you know what I mean? Like, there's people like you know, I'll have friends who be like, "Dude, I was like yelling at you, you know, in my com- on my commute the other day because it's like, you know, like when we're like." We're all three of us are like, what band was that? And like, oh, we're all kind of having like a always, brain spasm. Yeah, yeah. It's always when you're forgetting something. I know someone is like in the future should be like, it's this band. Yeah. From and I'm this like, area or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, or just the people being like, like having those or like taking a conversation and bringing it to their friend group and just fucking having a chat about it. And mm-hmm. like, you know, and, and our hope is to kind of like, you know, open – you know, I think it's 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 a harder job to open old people to new stuff than it is to open y- younger folks to older stuff. For sure, I think so. Like that's kind of a, it too. Like you know, we'll have people that listen because they like Pat's bands or like they just know Bob or they know me or whatever. Mm. That they're like, "Fuck, man, I never would have heard X, Y, and Z without listening to the podcast." For sure, that's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, and we have a ton of kids that were like, "I never listened to Inside Out" or "I never heard." burn or whatever and that like there's no shame in that you know yeah. what i mean and like and we want to be able to kind of present provide that space that it's kind of like no one knows everything so like get in where you can get in where you fit in and then get into other stuff if you want and if you don't that's cool too yeah that's fine mm-hmm. it's it, it's it's whatever you make of it so yes. it's kind of like and if we can help you know people are like oh can you make me a playlist of this i'm like happy happy to. <laughs> fuck yeah absolutely you know what i mean like whatever it is right. you know it's usually me and Pat fighting about like we I don't know if it came out yet. We fought about Tegan and Sarah. Oh, really? Because he was like, This band sucks. I'm like, have you actually listened to Tegan and Sarah? He's like, Well, no. And I'm like, I'm gonna make you a Tegan. And I'm like, would you shut up? Because I'm like, you're gonna get an offer like for like drug church to open for them or something. You're gonna be right. real bummed when they find out that, you know, I was listening to some podcast. I was the the drummer from Gaslight Anthem. Um was like talking shit about some band. I forget what band it was. And they ended up getting an offer. Oh, the Killers. Oh, and they got an really? offer to play like like an arena, like a football stadium in, in in London. Yeah. And like when they were like and like started this guy, he mentioned it on his podcast and and they started chatting. And then like the bass player was like, didn't you call us a bunch of shitheads in whatever magazine? And and they lost the t- they got booted from the show because he got caught talking shit. So I'm like, Pat, you gotta be careful, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like- there's people out there that listen. <laughs> Or they yeah. have a friend that's going to be like, no, tell Tegan and Sarah that are like, fuck drug church and self-defense family. <laughs> that singer has something against you guys, you know? Yeah. Like you were saying before, like stuff that's misogynistic or racist. Like, yeah, it's like, fuck em. Yeah, yeah, fuck them. I have but, no problem. But if yeah. you're like, oh, I don't like this band and I'm going to take time out of my day to like air like some wacky like take on a band like right yeah there's stuff in this heavy music space that like i don't like but i'm like maybe i won't like i don't want to burn any bridges that i don't even i haven't even ventured to yet you know what i'm saying right and you know i mean and you you know i kind of look at it too it's like i put myself in their position yes you know and if i was like a hardcore kid that like was in a band that you know may not necessarily even reflect my usual taste right i like you know i love grill biscuits at minor threat but i'm in a band that sounds like the acacia strain saying <laughs> sure right yeah, yeah and there's no i mean I, the dude vincent's like a fucking died in the wool like an orchid yeah but say like you know the kid the people that i would usually vibe with don't vibe with my band if i like turned on a podcast and i heard someone like tearing me apart 
be so fucking disappointed. So like, yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. I've seen enough, like, you know, people like kind of, you know, reading reviews or like people that I know would be like, what, you know, what singer do you, do you like, do you like Tom or do you like this guy? Do you like? I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, I don't want people tearing my, my work apart. Right. And like, why are you giving them the, 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 the space to kind of be like, this record sucks. I like the other guy, but like, don't do like enough people are going to have those conversations. Don't be the one to bring it up. And that's the way I kind of look at it. I would hate, I would never say anything bad about a band, even if I thought they were like the worst piece of shit ever. Right. <laughs> because it's like, Hey man, you know, like we were a piece of shit one time too. And people didn't like us. And like, it, I would hate to have, you know, then at least our, you know, there wasn't a band camp that weren't podcasts. So like people didn't have the ability to kind of be like, I'm going to shoot you down before you even start. Like, right. I just I wouldn't want anyone to, I wouldn't want anyone to do that to me so that's why I try to not do it to anyone else. Right. Yeah, yeah, I you think know what I, mean? I think um I think there's just largely like so much negativity in our world and like having any kind of platform puts pressure on me to like really push any positivity and good stuff out into the world because I know that there's just all the the bad and everything. So trying to balance the scales on that, on that regard. Um, yeah. And you can, you know, if you don't like it, you skip it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, you know, yeah, there's, there's, there's so much, you know, like, and that kind of goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier. Like if a band sends me a demo, I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. It's maybe not my favorite thing. And they're like, yeah, we would love to come on the podcast. Like, like maybe, maybe doing an hour and a half long conversation with that band. If I actually don't like the, the actual music itself um, is maybe not the best option, but like putting them on a small playlist that I can promote, like that's right. a great, very easy way. They still get some promotion. Um, so that's something that I'm realizing more like originally it was like, like I'm filming every band at this show and I'm putting the sets out, like whether it's the most hype band or like the not greatest set ever. Right. Um, but like this podcast, like, like, it's going to show on me if I'm just like really struggling in the interview, if, if I'm just like doing it because I'm trying to be a nice dude, if that makes sense. Right. No, it totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. You know? And like, I think even like, you know, with videotaping and stuff, I think it's such videotaping filming <laughs> shows and stuff like show my age. Um, I think it's even with that, it's such a, a slippery slope because, you know, you get somebody on a bad day, or you get a band that, you know, fucking murders it in Vancouver, kills it in Toronto, kills it in Montreal, but comes to Calgary and shits the bed. And the only video that people see is the Calgary show. Yeah. That has a really adverse impact on people giving that band a shot. Mm, yeah. Just like the opposite. I mean, think about like with Sonny, like Sonny helped Code Orange pop off. Absolutely. Yes. Sonny helped Vane. Pop off that mm -hmm. vein set when they were all wearing, everyone was wearing the matching yeah. windbreakers. <laughs> the windbreaker set, yeah, yeah, done. They yeah. were they were in. They he helped turnstile, you know, kind of really kind of kick into gear. Just you know, people seeing it like holy, like you want to be a part of that because that looks awesome. Yes, but you also see videos that it's like five people standing up front and everyone else sitting like in the back looking bored out of their faces. Mm. I feel like that has an inverse impact on people, and people are like, I'm never going to give that band a chance because that looks like fucking torture. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's kind of like a weird balance to me. Yeah. Like it is one of those things where, yeah, like, um, like even on that example, like, um, I had Jake from judiciary on the podcast a little bit before and Best they, dude. they've had this like Calgary curse. Like they've tried to play here twice. And the first time they weren't able to, because they were stuck on a highway on a snowstorm. And then the second was this pandemic canceled, uh, Fuck, you right, know, right. Wild so, you know, you know, they had like a badass set in Vancouver too, I'm told, but no video proof to to back that up. Right, and, right. And just like, you know, the the miss show and all those kind of things. So, you know, I, I am trying to think about that where it's like, you know, I know there are different activeness. Um, there, there's different um, activity levels in Vancouver to Winnipeg and everywhere in between. Right, right. And I think it's, you know, important to kind of document the growth of that because I've definitely seen the growth of vancouver over the last you know number of years when i've been filming shows calgary like even just the demographic of age being like 18 plus and then now it's like 
14, 15, 16, like in kind right, of right. Ju- jumping up on that regard. So, and even just Wild Rose in general, like the first time that I filmed it as Wild Rose, you know, the lineup is like, yeah, we got like these cool little bands and then 2020 would have been fucking mad ball and not, and knock loose. So like, Bonkers. yeah, you know, as, as someone that is like, I guess like emotionally invested, like I like to see the, the story of that, but I do. No, it ag- totally makes sense too. Yeah. yeah. But I do, I do agree that there are, you know, and that's kind of everything that's at, at play. Like either the band could be off their game, like the fucking power of the venue could go out. But I, I think it all right. just plays into, uh, into the story. Um, the grander story. Yeah. That's true. So judiciary also has like poor guys. We had them on the <laughs> podcast. They were in town for something or on the way on tour or whatever. So I had them at my house. Um, I had Austin and Jay come to my house. All th- you know, and we were all recording together. So it was six of us, you know, great time. It's awesome. Patch driving home to Albany has to skid out of the way to afford, uh, to avoid a deer in the in the highway in the middle of the highway. Mm-hmm. His computer goes flying. We lose the files. Oh no! So like they, those dudes have been back through New York, obviously. So like we owed Jake and Austin another go round. Like hopefully when they get the next record out or whatever, because it's mm. like I'm like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. Yeah, I was like, Pat's MacBook went flying across his shitty car, and like the 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 the, the um the uh, hard drive mm-hmm. got so damaged, like we lost the files. <laughs> He's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, uh, I'm really sorry. To, like, yeah. so those guys are cursed too. I mean, it's you know, yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah, there's some kind of judiciary bad mo- juju that kind of, and they're like the <laughs> nicest bunch of dudes. Yeah. That sucks. Nicest dudes and like a badass band. So it's like amazing. Yeah, like who like stepped on the wrong thing in the desert <laughs> and <you laughs> who cra- yeah, who crossed that black hat and <laughs> yeah. Do you think will there be a Wild Rose 2022? Uh ooh, that's interesting. Um. I like, hmm. I, 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 my optimistic, hopeful self, self says yes. Um, I think there is going to be enough, like maybe it's a little bit different because I think winter kind of like kind of forces people to like stay inside pandemic or not. So sure. I think, you know, vaccines largely will be rolling out hopefully by like the end of the fall. And then I think the winter will kind of just like, freeze that over to like don't go outside and right know, right this kind of thing so you know i i hope so i i you know i i know all the guys that that booked that fest and to see them like be like well i guess another year of of not that um you right. know that that's tough to see um but yeah that that's my hope and you know, I, like i was even chatting with um uh the last that like being local to Calgary that, you know, people would think that would be like the last festival that it went to. But the last one I got to film and go to was Snow and Flurry Fest, which is a festival in Minneapolis. Right, right. right. And uh, I had Jesse, who's the one of the promoters on the podcast. And he was like, maybe in November, um, like they're just like seeing like, are we going to be right in time when it's like, Right. socially okay to do like a hard and that's the thing festival. the optic of it is so tough too like that's yeah. more that's almost as important as anything to kind of be like we're not putting you in danger by putting the show on yeah that's tough yeah know, and- i like i think even when i was thinking about it i almost thought like it it's fair like everything is unfair but it might be more fair that every major north american hardcore festival had a two-year lull so like the very last one that happened was LDB in Louisville. So right, right. if it was like festival season officially came back around March um, of, 2022. of 2022, like I, I think fair. that would be, you know, again, it's nothing is fair in this whole no. like nightmare, but you know, if, if it wasn't like, Oh, we had to skip one year. It's like, we had to skip three years, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And it's just, t- yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, God forbid something goes awry, then yeah. it's kind of like fucking Louisville, you know what I mean, or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. or like on Calgary, man, they jumped the gun, you know, yeah. and it's like then it kind of puts everything back. But. Yes, yeah, um, and and maybe that's a a good segue to kind of chat about one of the last things here. So, sure, you know, you kind of were mentioning like people think that you guys just plug in your microphones and hit record and bullshit your way through three episodes. But it's if anyone who is like listened to more than like two episodes really knows that you guys like 
put a lot of time in the po- in the in the planning and um, pre pro for an episode. Sure. Um, but you know, there's also been times where I've seen like you know, and and we can allude to it a little bit on you know the New York Hardcore Show happening and just like what w- like maybe that's more of like a we should get on like get on a call and doing it do an episode so this is like a timely thing so so yes. tell me just like what goes into an episode like are those are there those moments that you're like like you know i i remember when when riley uh gail passed away r.i.p um you guys kind of like did a re-release of his his episode that i thought was yeah. really cool so so tell me about like you know the day-to-day aspects of axe to grind and, and what goes into you know uh, a block episode right sure 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 so usually like we'll we record wednesday nights for the the next tuesday oh release. okay so we try to keep it like since pat's been home we're all been kind of homebound that like we kind of like keep on a schedule so it's as, as current as can be sure um there were times that like uh, right before the pandemic maybe like I forget November December of 2019 maybe god was that long ago maybe <laughs> we um we literally got a hotel room for 2 days and recorded for 18 of 24 hours oh my because god because pat was pat was going away on a full tour and then as we were recording he mentioned he was going to Thailand after that tour for like a month okay. like in the middle of a conversation like on the podcast he's like yeah and then when i go on vacation i'm like we're like what <laughs> And so, oh, like, no. we literally, like, recorded for, like, maybe not. It was, like, 18. Like, we recorded 10 or 12 episodes. That's but crazy. But we tried to do, like, evergreen one. So it was kind of, like, sure. we're talking about a, a, a revelation record, whatever we could do to make it. <clears throat> so usually we kind of stay on that. Like, we had one recorded for this past release. But then, like, after everything went sideways, you know, we were, like, on the group chat. And we're, like, should we? record something tonight like monday night and then have it released tomorrow morning because like this is a hot button issue oh yeah you know? so it was that quick of a turnaround yes yeah, yeah. so really... we weren't planning on it like mm-hmm. and we had we did maybe like a month ago we did like an episode of like what do we think shows are gonna look like when do we think they'll be back yeah yeah, yeah. you know and even then i was kind of like this seems too soon but like you know do what you will um so then like we we like got on and like we had like a half an hour like pre-pro like here's what we should you know like be careful yes what, what you say because mm-hmm. you know it could it could um not end well <laughs> you know so i'm like you know we need to say what we feel like we need to say but like there's no need to take shots at people don't call people you know anything that you you know wouldn't say to their faces but yeah you know especially for me like i live here so it's kind of like i'm gonna be walking down the street one day and if i talk out of sorts i might have to pay for that you know what i mean so sure. like i don't really want to get beaten up i've gone this long you know um, but, but in terms of like prep for like a standard, it, it depends. So like we just, the next one that comes out next week, we did a uh, one on like late nineties emo. Oh, okay. Interesting. Which is just funny. We had planned that. And then it's like our one episode's about like New York Harker and the next one's like, we're an emo podcast now. Like it was just, you know, it wasn't intentional, but it kind of worked out that way. So like I put together, um, a 31 hour playlist. Okay. Damn. So yeah, so any of the ones like that that it's kind of like we do like the 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 year in review episodes, um, anything like that is 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 a huge undertaking. So like Bob will like go through discogs and find every record that came out in that year. Yes, yeah. Then we try to find. I then he gives it to me. I go through Spotify and try to find all of them. Yes, and then put it in a playlist together. Right, and then yeah. we usually do those like, and hey, we're gonna do that in like three weeks because it's like such a massive amount of music that's like, <laughs> and then some stuff it's like you know if we do a more current one like you need to listen to like, trapped under ice again like I know that like I know my you know birthday you know what I mean like I know like I don't have to listen to that again <laughs> right, I know right right I love it we know it I can talk about it for three hours yes but then there's stuff that's kind of like oh well I didn't know this record right I saw the name I didn't pay attention you know and like kind of. Um, so those are like, and sometimes we do wing it. Yeah, we go on and we're like, hey, you know what? We haven't really done like a questions thing in a while, or like, you mm-hmm. know, let's just talk about like, and we just get on there. And like, I think we're lucky. Like, we have like a good rapport that like we could bullshit for an hour and a half and not like some of the 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 side tracks we take. I'm like, what are we? We're talking about a mall in like suburban New York. Right. I'm like ninety percent, ninety nine percent of the people listening could give two shits. Right. But it's like funny enough that it's kind of like 
I could probably, you know, you have a similar experience wherever you may be kind of thing. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, like the prep are more for those like year in reviews or like any kind of more specific, like when we did like Mosh, we did Mosh Madness. Yeah, I was going to bring up Mosh Madness because like, like I love that whole idea. Like I, like I, like, and that was something that it was like a continual thing. Like I would listen to the, the very first one and I'm like, oh, I know next week we're going to like see who won and then take next steps from there. Yeah. And that was, that was, and we're going to do another one of those soon just because those are sort of like evergreen. It's like, yes, it doesn't matter. So like, you can like, it's not we, like if we record them all together of all the new demos out, like it's, right, it's right. more timely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So then we can do it so that like, we'll have say, you know, eight of those recorded that we can drop in when like Pat's on tour, Pat's here, you know, like, ah, okay. That's really so we smart. Do that sort yeah, of stuff. I like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, we usually, we try to record like one at a time and then like, we'll do like Patreon stuff when we're recording um we usually do like you know one week for the next week and then when we have breaking news like that you know um and then like especially with you know like you said when riley had passed it was kind of like what are we gonna do like this mm -hmm. it's such a giant loss for all of us that it's like nobody needs to hear us for two hours go on about what a wonderful human being he was and what a great band and all that sort of stuff so it's kind of like here's him being the incredible you don't need us to tell you here's him just showing it. right you know what yeah. i mean so that was like kind of our thought it was kind of like i'm sure a ton of people never listened to that the first time yeah so it's kind of like Me there's included. always new people I, you know like, what i mean like there's always new people you know yeah. but like and we don't tend to kind of go like you should check out like we had knocked loose on very early, like pretty early you know like it's not going to be like when they came out with the new record we're not going to be like listen to episode 72 like it, we don't do that right but with him it was kind of like you know everyone any person that's ever interacted with him or listened to his music knows what a human being he was like a great human being he was mm -hmm. here's that in his own words you know yeah, what i mean right we couldn't do any better than that you know mm -hmm. yeah um yeah and i think the most important thing for us is like consistency you gotta have one out every week yeah because the second you don't people go maybe they quit yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like no, you know 100 percent and I know you do that, and like, I, but I have a lot of buddies that do them. That like, it's like, there's no schedule or rhyme or reason to this. All of a sudden, like, you check your 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 podcast player of choice, and there's one in there, and right. that's cool too. But the consistency of kind of like, people know every morning at six a.m. East, you know, on every Tuesday morning, six a.m. East Coast, there's a new episode up. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll get texts like before I go to work. They're like, the new episode didn't go up yet. Like <laughs> that people know it's not up yet. You know, right. like it, this happened with the <clears throat> the New York one. Cause like by the time Pat finished, like he does like a little bit of, we don't edit anything. Yes. Yeah. You keep it like pretty, whatever it is, unless yeah. someone like kind of really goes off the deep end or says something they shouldn't have probably mentioned the name or like, you know, whatever we don't really kind of, what it is is like, that's the full conversation. Pat will go in and kind of, um cut down some of the dead space mm. which i mean there isn't a ton yeah so it's, it's it'll kind of like compress it a little bit more so it saves it some time but like other than that like there's no nothing else so like he whatever he used to post it it was after midnight so he put 8 a.m so it read it as the not this 8 a.m the next 8 a.m oh okay right yeah. so and he's in california and he's doesn't wake up for anything because he doesn't have a job so it's kind of like we're like nothing's up and it's 11 o'clock and like we were like texting his roommate, like, can you just like a like like accident like make noise and wake him up so we can get the stupid podcast on the air? Yeah, just hold pots outside his room and drive. <laughs> and Eric thankfully went in, he's a wonderful dude, and went in and like woke him up and 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 then it was up within you know 10 minutes. But like he had the file, he had the login. We're like, we can't do anything. Right. So now Bob and I have been up since 7 a.m. being like, we want this thing to come out, and then we had to wait for Sleeping Beauty to get up and <laughs> post it. You know? Yeah, but yeah, like consistency is the most important thing, you know, with with podcasting in general. Like, um, just you know, like even when I started this, it was like, okay, let's do one a week, and we were trying to like backlog a couple things, you know. Sure. Film. I think the first few that we like filmed with people outside of like our own little hard hardcore circle was yeah. at Wow, there was twenty nineteen, but I don't think the podcast officially came out until november and i think that was a growing lesson for me to like a keep things timely because like there was like things that were talking about i'm like oh yeah that tour did already happen or or whatever um but it was it was showcasing like again it was like okay i want to do things in person and then 
like just a few months later, COVID hit. And then it was like, okay, like I, I want to keep the consistency flowing. Cause you know, I'm going to run out of live show content to post. So like right. this, this whole venture that we're doing has really like kept us in the conversation and, and it has helped things grow even more. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, but you know, it, it was so much to a point where it's like, okay, we're doing one a week. Like, let's just up it to two. So now we do like two episodes a, a week. Right. And I think the thing for me that, that is always interesting, it's like, I know, like, because we primarily do like interviews with people, someone might just look at the name and be like, I don't know this band and they'll just go to the next thing. So right. it's always like th playing this game of like, okay, like trying to feature new bands that I genuinely think more people need to know about, but also doing the episodes that are, you know, Brian have knocked loose and it's like so many people recognize that name and, and want to hear that right. conversation. Right. So. right. And that, you know, we found that too. It's kind of like, um, like our biggest episodes ever have been like Pat Flynn when he, cause he came on to announce the half heart reunion. Oh yeah. Yeah. I do remember listening. Biggest to that one. one. That yeah, was yeah. like our biggest. The, I, the knocked loose one is like number two or something, you know? Oh, okay. Sure. Just cause they're gigantic and just like they promoted it and you know, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people like got into them and listen and vice versa. They're like, you know, it, they helped us. And I think in a very small part, like we helped like fucking hardcore kids that are not going to give bands that time of day. <laughs> they were kind of like, you know what? They sound like nice though. Oh, I'll check it out. And right, like, right. Whatever. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes when we have a specific guest or whatever, we see like sometimes we'll see the kind of uh, the listenership go down a little bit. I think sometimes I go, I, we are like, I think people would just rather us bullshit for two hours. <laughs> you think you have like a guest on, you're like, this will be great. And people are like, don't really give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, it, it's easy for people to turn off because it's kind of like, if I'm not interested, I'm not going to listen. And it's no shade to the, to the guest or the podcast. It's kind of like, I don't really like this band. So I'm not going to listen. But yeah. if it's just this kind of like, we're just going to talk about stuff. People more likely to check it out because it's like, I'm not already turned off. I might listen right. to 10 minutes and hate it, but like, no, you know, seeing a name t like tied to it. Sometimes, sometimes it works great. Like Brian and Isaac coming on. Mm. Sometimes we think it's awesome. And people are like, eh, yeah, I don't really. Yeah. I, I've done that dance on both sides though, because sometimes it's a smaller band, but that band may like, it's a supply and demand thing. Like Brian and, and, uh, and Isaac, for example, have done a plethora of different interviews all throughout the internet. But, you know, interviewing Laramie of Oklahoma's Give Way, very first time that she's ever done a podcast, it like blew up way more than I would have expected yeah. it. So, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people want to hear new kind of, you know, and, it, and, and there's a balance, you know, like we've had a lot of like older folks that are like legendary to us. Might not be legendary to a 24 year old. Right. You know? <laughs> and then, but then we have, you know, I mean, someone like Pat Flynn, it's like his band drew 10,000 people in a parking lot in Boston, in Massachusetts. So, like, he's pretty legendary to everybody. Mm. But then, you know, having those those dudes on, it was, it was before, um, way before the, the, um, the LP, you know, and, and they were like, they were listeners. So, like, they knew the vibe and, like, and they were just kind of, they were like psyched to be on. We were psyched to have him. And then like they promoted it. They kind of were into it. You know what mm. I mean? And like, we've had Isaac on since. Yes. Um, because we talked about metalcore with him just because he's like, <laughs> I'm like, we need someone from the youth that can talk about this because it's like, it's a, it's a bone of contention for us. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, Yeah. you know, on, on, on that whole topic. Cause I, cause I have been thinking about that a little bit more as this podcast grows and want to try yeah. different avenues. So, you know, like when I talk to like my team, I'm like, I want to do like more like axe to grind style episodes where we're just like chatting with one another and we have yeah. like segments planned and things like that. Because a plenty there's been there's plenty of podcasts that I listen to that are that style where it is just like the crew that's all like coming together and you know maybe they're talking about some memes that came out or like this thing that happened in the news or whatever. But it all right. is like you know like. I, I'm coming there for all those individuals versus like we're bringing on this specific guest. So, you know, with with you guys, you know, like having three dudes that all clearly love heavy music and hardcore, 
but obviously like you were alluding to before there's you know certain people like different styles of music people yeah, of course, yeah. you know you know have different takes on different things within hardcore or just the world so how do you you know like plan for like balancing some of those because i do hear some sometimes in there like i feel like it's a, a healthy bantering at times it's not necessarily like you guys are coming at odds with one another. No, um, no. But yeah, just tell me like how, because you know, I think even just like the New York uh, episode that just came out like really, right. really recently, like I, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, you know, I, the only piece of this that I'm connected to is like being in hardcore, like don't live in New York, don't know like majority of the people that the, were, like, right, the parties were putting involved. it on yeah. or yeah, the parties involved. But it was like, almost so relieving for me to like have you guys you know bring up the discussion and talk through some of those things for for largely like a lot of the hardcore world so so tell me about how you navigate some of those things when it's maybe like not not just like do we like this band or do we not like this band it's like this is more of like you know like there there's influence there and we need to navigate those waters um properly oh that's a great question i think i mean you know we want people to, you know, all of us to be honest. So like, there's times that we like take these like, you know, diversions in terms of po like, politics and all this sort of stuff. And like, Pat has a certain way that he looks at things. I have a certain way I look at things. And like, we have like a healthy argument. Mm -hmm. None of that's planned. It was just sort of like, it comes up, you know, like we kind of, you know, we, we, we argue about it. And like, I, I joke, I'm like, dude, I get the ends all the time about people like, what's up with your boy? Like your boy is a, like a nightmare. And I go, no, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I love him, and he's a character, but this is kind of a character. Like, he's mm -hmm. not always like this, you know. Um, but like, you know, something for like, you know, for the the New York one, like we we chatted just before, just because I was kind of like, I don't know how familiar you are with everyone involved. Um, not necessarily like the people booking it. I I mainly sure. just knew like the bands that were bands, playing, right? It. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. There are some, you know, pretty tough, dangerous folks involved. Sure. I'm quite friendly with them just from being in New York and being around forever. So I wanted to kind of be like, you can have whatever you want. I, was, I, I didn't want anyone to say something that could be seen as disrespectful. Sure. And I mean, that's kind of like, you know, my basis for anything. Like, whether it's someone that like couldn't beat me up that can beat me up that can sh whatever it is like everyone treat everyone with respect like treat people how you'd like to be treated mm. so like we kind of had a conversation about that but it, and i you know i kind of like i came up with like notes like stuff that i want points that i wanted to make sure that i that i got to you know and i was like this is what i want to hit here's my thoughts and like everyone else kind of had their same kind of conversation you know had their same points mm. and then we hit record and it was just kind of like then we just kind of talked it out um, but I knew Pat wasn't going to agree with me. Yeah. You know, and like, and, and, and I think that's fine. Like, I don't want, who wants to listen to three people being like, totally right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think that tension is right. Kind of makes it, you know, like makes it work. Like, you know, but you know, Pat and I ride for earth crisis. Bob hates earth crisis. Right. Yeah. So like that kind of tension keeps it, it keeps it fun. If it was three people being like, thumbs up, everything's awesome. Like, nope, it's boring. Yeah. But I mean, it's 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 all you know, good natured. So it's never kind of like it never goes awry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Although Bob did call Pat an asshole on the last episode, <laughs> and Pat and Pat left it in to his credit. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I think yeah, it's like we're, we're not you know, we're we're such friends and like we're buddies. So like I can't tell you how many times like we stop recording, and then we talk for another hour. Yeah. Definitely. That it's not mm -hmm. like, you know, stuff that may not be able, not, may not be ready for air, you know, like stuff that we shouldn't be spreading out or like just kind of like, did you see this? I heard about this. Did you, about you know, like that sort of stuff. Mm. But, you know, it, to me, it's, it's three friends with divergent opinions chatting. Yeah. So like, I would never want anyone to feel like they have to like, you know, I do have conversations with Pat and I'm rambling. So I apologize. No, the, you're the fine. Mango, <laughs> mango Pepsi's kicking in. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes I have to recenter Pat to a point because I think I'm like him more than anybody on the podcast has an odd sense of kind of um, like impact on folks. Mm, okay. That like he's got people that like follow him. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like there are Twitters 
that are based off of him. Oh, okay. Like there's a Twitter called the Kinsels. Like instead of incel, it's the Kinsels or whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's like a, a Kinlan Hive one. Like that. Like as soon as we post an episode, they repost it and all sort of stuff. So I'm like, mm. you have to work, like know, like you're not just talking to us. Right. Yeah. There's X amount of thousands of people that are hearing you say this. And if you're being reckless, like with your words, like someone who believes in you and believes in your music might take you seriously. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and like kind of be like, well, you know, Pat said that the vaccine doesn't work or whatever the fuck it is, whatever it may be. Sure. That you have a certain kind of gravitas to what you're saying that you need to be careful. Yeah. Because, you know, you might think it's a joke because he does that other podcast, Worst Possible Timeline, which is like, I can't listen to it because it's so fucked up. <laughs> that like, you know, you might not understand how much your words kind of have weight and like people may take it on face value and you're spreading shitty information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the only time I kind of have to re- like remind him that it's like not just three of us in a room, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have some kind of, and that's my whole thing. It's like, I feel like we all owe everyone something like not even on a podcast in like in general, in life and humanity Sure. that everyone owes everyone. Like there, we're all searching for like that common good to me. Like yeah. that's how I look at things mm-hmm. that like, you know, something that may not impact me, but impacts you. If I can, stop it from impacting you then i should do that and that's was my take on like on the on the on the covid stuff and on the show and stuff it's like if it only impacted you you can do whatever you like Mm -hmm. but that ripple effect is kind of ongoing so you have to kind of be careful with that sort of stuff yeah and i think that's what pat's very much like an end like a rugged individualist yeah sometimes that doesn't work but i do think that like having you know not like completely opposite ideas but like having differences where where you do have members of your audience who can like look at that show and be like, yeah, this, this, this is what we've been needing. This whole thing's been a sham. Uh, And then people on the complete opposite side who are like, this is fucking bogus and disgusting and blah, blah, like having it. So you guys can kind of be the mediators or the moderators, if you want to call it that and kind of pull people to at least, um, empathize and see the other side of the coin and be like, like, I, I, I think, I think a big takeaway for me, you know, was like, and and I had kind of thought this leading up, I think whoever was going to do maybe the first thing, whether it was the right time or the wrong time, it would immediately be met with some criticism. And there's like, again, we're not trying to do a part two to the episode that you guys did. <laughs> sure, I sure. highly recommend anyone who uh, is listening, who, who maybe didn't listen. Uh, it's, it's a great, great episode um, oh, that the A2G uh, team has done. Um, Tom, one of the last things that I definitely want to hit on before we start to yes. wrap up, um you guys for a long time sorry yeah no no (laughs) it's two hours good lord i'm like yeah normally i've started to do like an hour and a half to two hours but which is perfect yeah yes yeah i I feel like you had me on and i ramble (laughs) that's fine um you know one of the last things uh you know when you guys talk about your sponsors and the promo code you guys do the spell it out so right can you quickly give me the kind of origin like were people just using that code incorrectly they're like Ax T O O grind or like like how did yeah, how did think, that kind of come to be? I think Pat misspelled it like the first time or two because he did Ax A X instead of A X E. Oh, <laughs> and just then we're A-X. like, to, and we're like, dude, and we're like, spell it out or whatever, just because I, I and and then it became like a thing, and like people have like, we played I, Indecision played a back to school jam. And like people were yelling that at me. You're like, as we played, what's up? We're in decision. Spell it out. Spell it out. Like, seriously. That's hilarious. It was fucking amazing. And like someone yelled it, like, um, like a friend, I forget what it was, but someone like yelled it across the courtyard at like a mall, like, spell it out. Like it became like a thing. Right. Um, and then yeah, and then it, it was just funny, and we just kept doing it. Like, I was doing, like, horns in the beginning. Like, I would do, like, this, like, wah, 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 like, oh, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I just thought it was, like, it was stupid, and, like, it was, like, from other radio shows and stuff. Mm. And, like, like one dude was like, yo, that sucks. And then I was like, all right, I'm never going to do it again. And then tons of people were like, what happened to the horns? I'm like, well, this one person says he hates it. <laughs> and it, like, kind of spoiled it for me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it, was, it all the stuff was kind of natural and, like, or, like, like organically came around. Mm. But people were definitely misspelling it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, spell it out. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. No, no two like no number two no yeah it's like mm-hmm. a-x-e-t-o-g-r-i-n-d yeah well yeah i i feel like because I, on how you list your episodes it's a to g and i feel like that's a good way to, versus and i tell i tell this to anyone who's like starting a podcast like your podcast title like don't have like blah, blah like like shout out to joe hardcore i i love that this is hardcore podcast but like his first few titlings i was like no like we're we're so off base because it would just be like this big kind of like like i i get what he was trying to go after but all he had to really do is like t-i-h-e you know and then the number because that's all people are kind of looking for is like how far along in the yeah is this a new one and then you know, b- people in hardcore are really good at like, you know, doing those abbreviations of things where like you can see L Y N Y C and you'd be like, Oh, Long Island, New York hardcore or yeah. Right. Or New right, York, right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And people want to know how far, like if I'm just picking this episode, this podcast up today, it's like 74, All right. you know, like whatever it is, <laughs> like, I got some work ahead of me. Right. Or I know I have to go back and pick and choose the stuff that I want to listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, the A2G thing. And that's like kind of what we use for like, like our group chat is a2g it's this a you know like mm-hmm. but yeah we just wanted to make sure that when people were getting discounts that they spelled it correctly because <laughs> then we get the emails i'm like i don't run the the big cartel what do i mean like i don't right. know what to do like yeah you know and sometimes they still work you know but yeah we've been super fortunate with that sort of stuff but yeah, yeah. we've just come up with things that kind of hit and then yeah some, kept- sometimes you can't really plan for the some of the lore aspects of your creative stuff sometimes you just have to roll it with happens. it yeah yeah, yeah. like like bevs were just like a fun way of me just introducing that into the show and it's now awesome. it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in the podcast background you know <laughs> right now if you don't do it one day they're gonna be like, well what happened yeah yeah like i think that there were it. some episodes where i like didn't do or even like um oh and maybe this is the perfect segue um because the last portion of uh every podcast that i ask my guests is a favorite mosh story that they would like to bring up so it doesn't necessarily need to be like this happened at an indecision show or right. this happened at like a show I was at or back to school jam, whatever it is. Uh, whatever's the first thing to your mind is how we kind of end things. So I'm, I'm glad that that was like a seamless thing. <laughs> <laughs> best Moss story. I mean, I've had a few. Well, it, it doesn't need to be the best, but it could just be a favorite, you know, off the top of the head. Um, and that, and that could think, be good, bad or ugly. So like, yeah. Oh, people were like going f- crazy or, you know, this many body parts were broken in this person. All right, I got two. One's a bad one, and one's a funny one. Okay, hit me with both. And I'll tell I'll tell them both quickly. Um, as a kid, I was like 17 years old. I was at um, a Marauder show in Brooklyn, and I was standing on the outside of the pit, and some skinhead hit me so hard that you can hear it over a five-piece band. Oh, my like God. in the temple, like oh yeah, that, like everyone was like, are you? Are, are you still alive? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but like that really hurt. But I'm like, I can't not, I can't like fall down. So I just like stood there. Like I like Marauder loud band, small club, whoever hit me, hit me so hard that it was like clear as day above. <laughs> yeah. If, if the band wasn't playing, like you could hear it from space probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was fucking, yeah. So that's the only one I'm always like, Oh, so that was my first concussion. That's what I always think of. Like when I think back, I'm like, have I ever been concussed? I was like, you definitely got concussed. Yeah. When you got hit by a skinhead loud enough to be heard over music. Yeah. And then, um, indecision. I was moshing on stage, I guess you could say we, uh, got to play with judge at, um, back to, uh, uh black and blue bowl okay and uh we were opening with um rise and fall from leeway and i was like you know jumping around the stage and whatever and and now there's like two thousand people there watching our dumb asses and um i hit like there were cords in between the two monitors and i fucking slipped and ate shit but it was just at a time that like the lights flashed oh okay so people were like did you have a seizure because it looked like it was like a flash of light and I had a seizure. So I started going with that. Oh, so they thought that the lights put you out versus like you right. just tripped. But meanwhile, I just stepped on something <laughs> and I fucking. Sp- but like I did like this, like the dude from Bleeding Through used to do like this barrel roll across the stage. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I did. Like I kind of like fell and like got right back up. Oh, okay. And then someone else saw it as it looked like a, fl- like a lightning flash that God struck me down. <laughs> For doing all the shit that I've done over the years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of like, it was, meanwhile, I just slipped on a fucking cord, but it's either I had a seizure or God had enough of my bullshit and fucking struck me down. So. Way, way cooler with those yeah. uh, analogies. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I, I love both of those. I think, yeah, I think a lot of, um, you know, when shows do come back, I think just, just the, I feel like there's the muscle memory as far as playing, but you know, there's just knowing your space as well. Like the first time you're like, Oh, I have, I've been on a stage and I know that this is how far I have before I just eat shit on the, on the floor. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, there's going to be some funny gifts coming out of people just being like <laughs> rocking out and just fucking eating shit right off like going oh, into yeah. the darkness yeah because they're so stoked that they're playing live music again and then they're just like Whoa, right and they don't like, realize shit. there's no like yeah there's, yeah there's no railing over there but oh yeah yeah well tom <laughs> this has been a, a wonderful wonderful chat again i yes, do thank you so not, much um take this for granted by any means and again look up to you know what you're doing with axe to grind uh is is huge uh i think for podcasting in our space um so thank you I shout out to that. you well, uh if there's anything that you want to plug or um send the people off with the floor is yours uh for whatever you got wow um not much to plug you know if, you, if you've never listened to axe to grind um check it out you may hate it some people hate it some people like it um you know it's a little bit of everything for everyone um and uh yeah, I mean, I just thank you to anyone who's ever given us a chance and listened to one episode or 170, whatever it may be. Um, it, it really makes a huge difference. And and I don't know if it, it, we might have been stubborn enough to keep going without anyone listening. But like the fact that it's like, you know, people still listen and kind of give us, you know, we're able to have that kind of um, conversation with folks and kind of help, you know, bands look out for us we look out for bands you know we do like the live uh, um that's a, that's probably a way to go you know if you've never listened to a, po a one of our episodes like there are a bunch of live at extra grind sets that we've done yes yeah so we had the gulch and we had drain and we had uh regional justice center regional justice center yep. uh magnitude mind force um spine a ton worn um, so we usually kind of addend them to the end of a uh, regular, so the episode will be a little bit shorter and we'll have, you know, a band do five to eight songs, some covers like, um, so yeah, if there's bands that you like check out that and then maybe listen to us pontificate beforehand, I guess. Um, but you know, thank you Spencer for having us on, have me on, um, just to discuss our craziness and, uh, Hopefully, you know, we'll see everybody at shows sooner or later. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very looking forward to what you guys are doing. Um, you know, you know, I know that you guys just got on that um, podcasting network and I, I have to commend you for not doing like the commercials before the episode. Cause I know that there are some other podcasts on that network or I'm like, click the episode and I got to l listen to five minutes of ads. I'm like, what the, like, this is no, not what I'm yeah. about. <laughs> Would they just like kind of toss them in and it's like yeah and that like that network is like run by like pat's best friend oh okay cool yeah. he's, he's a huge like booking agent that mm. they kind of like in the pandemic they're like we should probably do this too mm -hmm. so we were kind of like you know hey you want to do this <laughs> right and we're like we're kind of like they're like you know trial run yeah and then right. he's got another there's some other cool stuff on there you know and but yeah he it's sort of like We've been lucky enough to sort of be like, we're, we're not doing this. Yeah. We're not doing CBD oil. We're not doing fucking bullshit. <laughs> right. If you do like food stuff, it's got to, there's got to be vegan options or whatever. Right. You know, so they've been cool with us kind of being hard asses about what and what, what, you know, I'm not talking about mattresses. Like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's going to be like, you know, Casper mattresses are the best. Like, no, I'm yeah. not doing that. You when, know? when you're on tour, you want to stay at someone's house with a Casper mattress. Right. <laughs> like, it's Right. It's like, check those tags before you lay down. Cause if yeah. it's not a Casper, you're the fuck out of there. Like, I'm, yeah. We're not doing it. Go sleep in the, in the van, like a real hardcore. Kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Tom, this has been really fun and uh, hopefully great, we Thank can you. do something again in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the time.